share screen. So let's talk about what's in the Bessem Extras Kickstarter. Do that. Come over here. We'll F11 that mess. Get it full up. And we're going to do the, ex the actual Extras book last because we'll spend some time there. Now, I'm not going to go through. This isn't going to be like a thorough review or anything like that. It's just going to show you guys what it is. So uh, you can go to uh, the Discami website. I should probably have that available. Discami. D-Y-S-K-A-M-I dot C-A, because it's Canadian, or Bessem for Life, B-E-S-M, the number four dot life, L-I-F-E, and uh, that's the homepage, check it out. It's Central Specific Time, old episode of Family Guy, Brian's, oh, okay. Graphic Anomaly, I've been working on a world originally played in GURPS, hey, look at that, for the past 10 years, and I recently received my Masters in Games, that, that, that's a thing? I, hey, wait, whoa, 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 they got a Masters in Games, I'm going, I'm going back to school! Focusing on character concept art. I'm curious if you're looking for a project leads in any new world books for, uh, for Bessem. I, me, no, but uh, I would talk to Mark McKinnon at uh, Discami. I, right now, I have a full-time job. I can't even think about making adventures for a game, let alone world design. But, 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 with that, uh, with that in mind, uh, go to Bessem for Life. <laughs> There's Discami. You can chat with Discami right there. You are more than welcome. Uh, like I said a moment ago, you've been cool to us. I know I can really ruffle some feathers. I, it's, you know, it's partially intentional, partially, you know, emotion gets clicks and so forth. But, you know, I still believe what I say. But, uh, no, uh, you've been absolutely awesome to us. I'm not even the, the anime guy. That's Heathen Duck. <laughs> but here we go. I've got a, I've got a game system that uh, I hope to one day actually play. I really do. But, um, eh. You know, I, I'd never run it. I wouldn't be good enough to run it. I, I, I know my limitations, and this just isn't my strong suit, so. But let's take a look. Let's, let's zoom in. Let's take a look at the Anna Minis. Now, let me move this screen over there. Move this. Oh, stop it. I don't even know what you're seeing right now, because my screen went all types of haywire on me. Oh, you're, okay, so I'm showing it by screen. All right, I got it. So let's do that. By the way, were you, oh, that's what I was supposed to. I was supposed to show Heathen Dog's video. Well, we'll do that later. Let's get, uh, oh my god. It's almost like I've never done this before. <laughs> I don't do this every week or anything, no. <laughs> let's get that up there. Ah, let's, uh, let's show up. By the way, you will see that this is all watermarked in my name here, so uh, yeah, I'm not, you're not getting any free copies from me. <laughs> zoom in on this a little bit. I said let's zoom in on, okay, we're not zooming, there we go. Bessem, 2D Animinis. And I know somebody's mad. Those aren't minis. Those are standees. Shut up. I call them minis myself. I, I, get to, I go to Ark Knight because probably expensive for little clear plastic pieces of paper uh, or uh, clear pa plastic. But I still call them minis. And I have some of my, you know, <laughs> more obnoxious friends. Those aren't minis. Those are standees. I am not using the word standee. So let's check. Let's take a look at what they're. Now, one of the things I, I do believe and uh, Mark can uh, correct me if I'm wrong, is that these may not be in final print product. Like, these are PDFs, so they could get updated at any, uh, any moment here. Um, extra flat minis. <laughs> there you go, squished minis. There Ironed minis. Um, so well, I don't know 100% if this is the final product, because a lot of times when you get stuff uh, in uh, uh, drive through RPG as PDFs, it's, it's, they're not proofs, they're, they're beyond that. But it's like, here's what we're going to send to the printer here momentarily, but you get first look at it, and then it's like, uh-oh, I know that happened with a couple of the Forbidden Lands things and the Earth Dawn stuff uh, for me, for example. So everything's printed already and will be filled, fulfilled in the coming two weeks. Well, there we go. <laughs> so uh, look for that. You know what's going to suck is, is it's going to get shipped out here and APO mail is horrible. And I'm going to be in transit to Alabama to, for my move or something, and it's going to get lost. That's, that's my luck. All right, let's take a look at these uh, minis. Um, I would pull out my Arknight collection just to show how perfect these minis are for me. Because I already have stands, I already have, you know, this going on. I think the only difference is that the Arknight ones, they're, they're clear. But I also play a lot of old school Battletech, and yes, I have my old cardboard standy things from, uh, from second edition Battletech in the 80s. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, there you go. Check it out. Best them for life. And here we go. Just kind of scroll through this, get an idea. I like the mixture here. Let's see. Got Thumper, 
I mean, you got, you got the, you know, you got the anime girls, you got the uh, Satter dude. That's actually from the book itself. I, I wonder if all these are from inside the book. Some of them, I, like that is, yeah. But uh, uh, Aminals here. That's right, I said Aminals, like from the Muppets. Got to front and back. If, as you can see, they, uh, he repositions them, so it's like you can put it front and back. Obviously, that's what you want. Nice little uh, dragon here. Uh, Mecca. Squishy thing. Oh, what was it? What's that stupid? A uh, slime. <laughs> Damn anime. He and Doug loved it, and I'm like, just the concept of it is like, I'm not watching that, ever. Max is sugar daddy, if anyone didn't know. That is true. That is true. <laughs> so, all right. Um, I, I don't want to spend too much time on this. Like I said, I just want to show you what you're getting. And we've got some more uh, conventional cardboard stand-ups. Like I said, these would really go in well with, like, the Battletech ones. The squishy thing. <laughs> it's yeah, it's, uh, it's uh, something about uh, reincarnated as a slime or something. <laughs> like I said, I'm not the anime person. I'm not disrespectful of it. I mean, my wife's Japanese. If I was disrespectful of it, I'd probably get seppuku So, <laughs> But... Uh, it's just never been, it's never really been my thing. Uh, back in the 80s when we called it Japanime, I used to make fun of the, of the, of the nerds that watch this stuff. You know, they're watching their apple seeds and Akiras and so forth, and I'd be like, yeah, whatever. But, uh, it's grown on me, though. I gotta tell you, it's grown on me, uh, you know, partially because Heathen Dog, you know, and all his reviews of it, I'm like, eh, it's actually not so bad. So there are some I have watched. I don't rush out the door to watch it, but there are some I watch. Got the... Cut us where you can cut your own. I, I like the I like the different dynamic here, where it's like you've got these with the cutouts, the car, uh, the the rectangular ones above, the ones without any background on it. Of course, I could print these out if I had a decent color printer. I could print these out and uh, yeah. Okay, let's uh let's mash the F11 button. That's on the wrong screen. Let's mash the F11 button. Let's mash the F11 button again. Let's see what else we have. We have Dramatis Personae. All right. It's because I'm I'm looking over there because I have it on that monitor. I usually keep things on my center monitor. But you know. Just found some jalapeno seeds in the salsa put on my, my barbacoa. What? I feel as as if anime has lost its popular. I mean, there there are some issues with anime right now. I mean, uh, the West is trying to tell Japan how to how to make anime in japan at first it's like okay 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 you know we like western money we're gonna do it but you know as is want to happen with things like comics gates on and so forth you push you push and push now japan's saying screw you guys anime is for us you're either gonna watch or you're not and we don't care so we'll see how that actually shakes out especially with sony funimation and uh and crunchyroll all being under one roof which is something i don't trust but you know all right, so this is for fourth edition Bessem, of course. Characters in the front. In the myriad realms of imagination, there are an infinite number of intriguing characters to be discovered. 71 characters, and no, we are not going to look through them all. <laughs> but we'll get an idea of what is in here. By the way, uh, to be fair, I did scroll through this when I first got the email the other day. But I ha actually have not paid attention to any of this. Like, I'm kind of seeing this all for the first time as well, simply because I didn't have time. So, uh, yeah, it's been a very, been a very interesting week for me. Let's uh, put it on the screen here, the people who uh, put this together, and the credit, credit's due. All right, so we're going to start with a 60-point character, Anna Johnston. She's a human adventurer, and she's from Earth Prime. Well, that makes sense. She's a tall girl. 5-8. Um, by the way, I, I like this. I am, the, the game that I'm making that I've had on hiatus for a few months, I'm actually doing everything in the metric system, even though I'm an American. I prefer yards and feet because I understand them better, but I, I, but I also want to make a global, <laughs> a global book. So, uh, yeah, uh, but, I, but I like this because I can't, I don't know what a 5-8 is. I, I can visualize this. I can't visualize this at all, <laughs> to be fair. So, suicide by Matt. I live in San Antonio. Uh, what are we talking about up here? Uh, 
want to make sure I'm not missing any chat here. I don't have Heathen Dog. Uh, too far over to Japan stance. If you were going to make what we want, how we want, people are turning away. I, I don't think people are turning... I mean, I could be wrong. I don't follow it well enough to, to know for sure, but I don't think people are turning away. You know, it's the typical woke versus not woke stuff. I think there should be both. I really do. That's one of the things that people don't understand about me, especially when I rant, is if you want something woke and that's for you, do it. I have no problem with that. Just don't change what I already have and let people make the non-woke stuff. That, that's really all I've ever said for any of this, whether it's game or comics and so forth. But I argue against those who come into whatever hobby, whether it's gaming or comics or, or movies or anime, whatever, and try to change what people already enjoy. I absolutely have a problem with that. My brain will die with Sudoku. Okay, I'm going to go. Oh, you can see here. So, again, we talked about the game system with the point system and whatnot. You can check that in a previous video. But, uh, or you can just buy the game at sm4.life. And, uh, but, so what you got? You got attack mastery, combat technique, blind fighting. Well, that's good. So this is actually, this is a very D&D-esque type character. 60 health points, 55 energy points. So what's she going to spend those energy points on? Mm. Off the top of my head, I don't see that she necessarily needs to. But uh, this is coming from somebody who's experienced with the game, is <laughs> other than reading and reviewing it. Character background. See, it's not just stats. It took the time. What backgrounds in? So you're actually playing a character. Now, of course, if you like the way the character is built, make your own. The game says that. Bessem itself says that from, like, page one. It's your game now. Do what you want with it. Pretty sure it's the same here. But uh, I do like this because it gives, like, oh, okay. I sometimes, you know, like the old RPG, I can't stand Adventures League, and I don't like Pathfinder Society because I don't like those games. But the old days, the RPGA network, I like those. Uh, you know, getting handed a character and saying, okay, play it. See how well you do. <laughs> so, hey, Spectrofire, how you doing? Now, Spectrofire is an anime person. Spectrofire knows his anime. So, I'm going to return this. Please do try to stop me. All right, let's go to an 80-point character. 80-point character is Android Battlemate. Oh, there we go. I actually want to see that. I <laughs> thought that was funny when I first saw it in the book. Uh, in the main book, but Dunham Arcs. So, uh, Android Battlemate, Bodyguard. Eight. So... What do we got here? We got 100 health points, 50 energy points, and a damage multiplier of 5. Jumping, power flux, here we go. Equipment programs. See, these are the things that I don't fully understand. Yes, I can read it. Yes, I can talk about it as I'm reading it, but all told, until I play the game, it's just like champions for me with the variable power pools and all that other weirdness. Bessem is not as intense or as crazy as champions. Let me be very clear about that. But. Uh, Achilles heal electric attacks. Well, that makes sense. She's a robot, right? So, <laughs> fellow weeb. There you go. She can download new programs to swap out her skill groups. That makes sense. Johnny Mnemonic going on over here, right? I'd say it's probably something pretty good for a cyberpunkish type game. More than that, obviously. But that's the first thing that comes about. Damn, these chicks are tall. <laughs> All right, let's... Uh, Let's, let's scroll down. Uh, let's just scroll down for a little bit. You can see a whole ton of characters in here. Like I said, the intent was not to go through all of these. Oh, I, okay. I, stop. Stop. Who's this? Okay, we've got uh, Human Hacktivist. Uh, Cyberpunkish again. <laughs> Homeworld is Imago. Oh, Imago. Which one was that? That was the... Um, crap! I actually understood these. I can't think of which one that is off the top of my head. Damn it. <sighs> anyway. <laughs> there are multiple worlds in the anime multiverse for Bessem. So she isn't from Earth itself. Japanese cyberpunk equals bubblegum crisis and ghosts in the shell. I've seen a little bit of ghost in the shell. Uh, it didn't make sense to me because I caught it in the middle. The MMO version of Champions insanely complicated. Yeah, I played the MMO version of Champions when it first came out, but uh, uh, the reality punk. That's right. That's right. You know, we just reviewed this. I mean, I've only been separated from the game for a little over a week, and I've already forgotten. 
everything. I feel like such a nerd. A nerd? An idiot. There we go. I was thinking nerd earlier. Oh, I wanted to see her. So her abilities. Anonymous organization. Uh, that, that connected thing could be... Uh, we looked at that. That could actually be abused. <laughs> As a game master. I'd, but it's, it's only level 2. It's not that bad. Uh, Dadax, worldwide activation, concentration... So she's got to concentrate. Um, so it ends up being a level 9 power for only 10 points. Wow, but that concentration, I, I, that's okay. So if you can keep her disturbed. Uh, appearance, uh, lightning calculator. Interesting. Here. And she's got three full skill groups. Like, now this one's only uh, level 2, but still. And some wealth to, go, to back her up. Nice. But she's fragile. Hounded. <laughs> I love Hounded. If I remember correctly, that, that's uh, basically you're annoyed by somebody, but you're annoyed to the point where it's like you just can't get away. Like it's actually game affecting because you spent points on it. Like, leave me alone. Lumina Saber. Uh, she's my favorite character. Okay, so people are talking about stuff. Hey, I'm glad you guys are chatting. Because I pretty much don't understand anything you guys are talking about, so keep chatting amongst yourselves. <laughs> Uh, all right. Let's uh, let's scroll down. Let's see if we can find something weird. Uh, that's a tiefling. Uh, when I say weird, I mean like really weird. You a hobbit? You're a hobbit, aren't you? Yep, halfling. <laughs> uh, no, not not yet. We're only like halfway through. Okay, Jack Dart. Oh, there we go. Just the name alone. We gotta look at Jack Dart. Jack Dart. <laughs> He's human. His occupation is hot rod. Street racer. Go speed racer. So he's also from Imago. And uh, Habitat is the dart machine motorcycle. So his motorcycle is his Habitat. So pretty decent stats there. Well, how many points was he? 60 points. Uh, health, okay. I mean, for 60 points. All right. Combat value. Oh, he's got a lot of level ones. Okay. He's just getting started in the hot rod, you know, in the racing scheme. He, he can't quite do the pod racing yet. So, uh, got a lot of, uh, magnet, he, he's got a lot of followers also. It's just a magnet for the, uh, for the crazy ones, right? Nemesis, oh, it's got a nemesis. Dirk Falkirk. Hey, what's this guy's name? Jack Dart versus Dirk Falkirk. Maybe it is pod racing, maybe it is Cibola over here. <laughs> uh, I would either die or be powerless without his bike. Well, uh, let's see here. He's wanted. Well. Social fault overconfident? Well, with a bunch of ones, you have to be overconfident. <laughs> Only way you can get anything done. Um, he's a GEO freelancer. Oh, wow. Remember, this is the corporate world. Or, or uh, not corporate. Uh, what's it corporate? Yeah, you had the, the two big factions. Uh, some crossover Cyberpunk 2020. I'm um, more content with uh, when. I guess some people are talking. Sorry if I'm missing your chat. I'm trying not to just be boring about because I usually oh that was something weird. Usually it's me and Heathen Dog here. I got to do this by myself. Only a forty point character now. We're now we're maybe talking a companion here, or we're talking you know a little bit easier game to play. Yeah, Geo and one. Pathfinder 2 isn't too bad. Pathfinder 1 and D&D are way too uh, min maxwell. I, I don't like Pathfinder to get off topic for a moment because I don't like Paizo as a company. But the one thing you don't hear on our channel is well, while we rail into Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition because it's got the Dungeons & Dragons label on it, we don't rail on Pathfinder too much because it's its own game. If it wants to make new lore and it wants to do things differently and it wants to be its own thing, just like Earth Dawn. Earth Dawn's its own thing. I don't complain about orcs and Earth Dawn. Because Earth Dawn's always been its own thing. Now, if they're to come in and start saying that orcs are completely different in Earth Dawn, that now they're they're short, non-aggressive, and uh, you know something else, well then then I'll rail on it. You know, and that that's my problem with Fifth Edition D and D is that it's uh, it's not Dungeons and Dragons. Neither is Third Edition, though. So to be fair, um, but uh, yeah, we don't really go off in Pathfinder too much. Although none of us like it in Legion of Myth, and. What I mean by that, I'm talking like the, the founders, owners, whatever, Legion of Myth. I'm sure there are people in our Discord who do like it, and if that's what you like, play it. Have fun. There are going to be people who don't like Bessem. God forbid. But, you know, there are going to be a lot of people who do. So, 
play it, enjoy it. I, I got to tell you that one of the things that I, that I, you know, when I went into Bessem, when we first started talking, we go look at episode one, I go right off the bat and I say, look, this is a point based game. I don't care that the dude calls it an anime game, whatever. I can draw spiky characters on anything and it's an anime game. Champions, GURPS, et cetera, et cetera, any point based game, right? I had to backtrack that when I did the review of it. Just the way that the how it is really set thematic because, you know, you tell me it's thematically set a certain way and I'm going to be like, yeah, whatever. I can thematically set anything up the way I want, but it is thematically mechanically set up that way. So, yeah. Now, could I go the other way around with it? Could I turn this into a GURPS type game? Why, why would I want to? So, yeah, I had, I had to kind of, I don't want to say eat crow, but I definitely had to backtrack on that one. So, but let's look at the Shizuka Moto. Tiny, that's uh, probably where some of the points come from. And it's a melting ice cube. That's all you have to know. You are playing a melting ice cube. <laughs> okay, what are you actually playing here? So, uh, body is a little low, yeah, but uh, remember, was it uh, fours or defaults, if I remember? But uh, soul's pretty high. I mean, I, I, when I say pretty high, I'm talking for a 40 point character. Your, your default is kind of 24, it's like the base. So, there, there isn't a lot you do after that. Attack uh, combat value is four. Yeah, I mean, with the exception of the damage uh, multiplier, these are kind of low. But you're talking a 40 point character. It's okay. Change state, quick change. Uh, cognition, post cognition, environmental nature. I uh, don't fully know what that means, but it sounds cool. I'd have to look up the ability again. I, I... Healing, now that. There you go. And some force field. I mean, it's only one point, but hey. Heal herself. Heal itself, herself. Uh, skill group domestic. Aw, oh, cook me some food, thanks. And summon creatures. Now you're talking. Summon some creatures to help. So, uh, not bad for a 40-point character. I mean, it's tiny. It's not going to do a lot of damage. Uh, even though it says damage multiplier uh, 1, I forget what all the penalties are, but just by being a tiny character, you're suffering. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Divided by 4. The distance is it, all right here. Minus 20 strength damage. So, you know, if you're used to doing, well, 20 damage, you're doing 0. <laughs> you know, if you're used to doing 25 damage, you're only doing 5. So, there you go. Oh, God, they're hyper. They're hyper! <laughs> so, this is, my chat's not scrolling here, that's annoying. I miss when characters actually have to buy light sources and hire torch bear hirelings. I never liked the hireling portion of it, because uh, people would misuse them into something else, so I pulled them out of my games. Like, completely pulled hirelings out of my first and second edition AD&D games. Yeah, I know it's anathema, I know somebody's gonna freak out, but I did. What I like is how Forbidden Lands handles uh, pretty much everything. Food, drink, warmth, and uh, well, arrows and torches. How they handle the consumables. And I'm not going to go into it here because we're talking about Bessem, but uh, I think it is a great balance between the, uh, the old school mentality and, you know, uh, of count every single torch versus whatever you've got lighting move on. Or just everybody have continual light. Who cares, you know, how they get kind of lazy about that. I think it's a great balance between the two. Check out Forbidden Lands. I also love the company. God, I hope they don't go crazy. I mean, I'm always nervous. They're a Swedish company, and uh, they work a lot with the UK, and they have a partnership with Modifius, which is a company I can't stand at all. So I get nervous about their quote-unquote wokeness one day. But for now, nah. For uh, Free League Publishing, they get a thumbs up for me. But let's talk about Skami, who also gets a thumbs up. Let's start talking about it. Um, all right, uh, let's, let's scroll down to, ooh, 110 points. Now we're starting to talk a little bit more, uh, more capable. Why is everybody 5'8"? Dudes are 5'8", chicks are 5'8". Oh, okay, never mind, it's chicks. So obviously not Japanese people. <laughs> I lived in Japan. I was like towering over everybody, and I'm... <laughs> oh, what do we have here? Now we're talking some stats. Uh... Attack combat value, unarm 16, defense kind of range 16, okay, 125 health points, wow, nice. But again, we're talking 110 point character, so that fits within line of, obviously you don't want your 40 point character trying to go mano a mano with a 110 point character. 
look at all these things. lots of ones and twos you know what i like about that is instead of just focusing on like one or you know let's say three or four abilities attributes let's call it what the game calls it three or four attributes trying to go diverse and i actually like that because i think sometimes whether it's point-based games or class-based games people become too niche and there's nothing wrong with that i tend to do that as well i tend to become very niche with my characters because I'm like, you know what? I want to be good at throwing fireballs or fire and that concept and that's it. That's all I'm going to do. Everything else, well, I'm going to need people around me. And well, that sounds great, you know, in, in one regard, you know, if you're doing it in like a, in a team-oriented manner. The other regard is you're one trick pony and you're going to be sitting there complaining like, I'm bored. I get to the fire at everything. So I, I like the fact that these characters have diversity to them. This one doesn't have a lot of... Uh, by the way, we have uh, limiters and, um, oh my god, enhancements. If you notice, like, this is the only one focused. Um, suggest page 84. All right, we'll look at page 84 then. Umbreeze, yeah, my wife is uh, 5 or 5 so yeah. Okay, uh, what page are we on? We're on 76, all right. Per suggestion from the creator. We're going to go to page 84. All oh, right. Dark. Oh, my God. Did you do this to me on purpose? You know my feeling towards drow. It's not a drow. It's a dark elf. Um, necromancer. Now, see? Not, it's like got the dichotomy there. I hate drow and dark elves, but oh, I love necromancers. So it's from a car. It's a prime world. Uh, habitat under the dragon spine mountains. That sounds cool. Five, seven, ah, an inch shorter, but the ears make up for it. <laughs> I'm done. Uh, by the way, you know, one thing I haven't talked about is, um, I like the consistent art. It isn't like one is amazingly awesome and the other one's like, oh my God, why am I looking at that? I like the consistent art. That's something I've got to say. I, you know, even when art is kind of bad, like the Earth Dawn books, sorry, I don't like Lobenstein's art. Um, I like the fact that it's mostly consistent. Okay, so what are we looking at here? Body stat, 10. Oh, I'm sorry, that's points. Value of 5, so a little higher in body. Look at that soul, though. 10 soul! Ooh. But soul is going to be used for the spellcasting. Attack combat value, magic 12. Jesus. I mean, how many points? Oh, 180 points. Okay, we're talking a, a high-value character, but only 75 health. Only 75. But, I mean, that kind of fits the theme of a magic user, right? Does to me. Less health than that 120-point character, but... Now let's, uh... Uh, do, 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 thanks, Baldahar. Bah humbug. Hey, Baldahar, by the way, Baldahar, um... Did you get everything worked out? And I'm not doing this to call... Discami out at all. I'm doing this because I haven't talked about the heart since then. Did you get everything worked out with your Bessem book? Because if not, I'll buy another one if I have to. Not calling anybody out. I literally will. I was about to do that anyway because I thought Amazon was going to make me. But if anybody's like, that was rude of you to do. Talking to him because I haven't talked to him since then. Yep, got that covered within an hour. Well, that's freaking awesome. That is awesome. So thank you, Mark for that uh discami on on chat thank you i'm happy that uh that was resolved i felt a little weird about that because I, I felt like i was kind of calling him out i was I, absolutely not intending to do that i wanted to know if baldahar got everything worked out because hey we had a 2000 subscriber giveaway and i gave away three books one of them was uh Bessem, and we had a we had an issue but it was resolved that quickly that's awesome love it that's how you keep customers. Good, you know, good uh, customer service. Uh, connected. Significant house. That's a minus one, though. Huh. Not sure I'm fully understanding the minus one there. Oh, it's minus one. Okay, no, no, never mind. Never mind. It takes down the level because... Okay, I got it. Because it's actually a benefit. Wait a minute. Am I getting that right? Significant is more powerful, so it's a limiter. Okay, you're right, you're right. God dang it. I think I didn't review the game. I did. So, yeah, no, that, that makes sense, because uh, it's limiting the, the level. Same amount of points, limiting the level. Uh, control environment darkness, well, that... Is that a drow? I mean, don't drow have that innate ability to darkness 15-foot radius or something? 
dynamic powers, uh, necromancy. Uh, so th that's limiting because it's a power. But backlash now, backlash was something I looked at for characters. I like the concept of it. Like if you if you roll poorly, <laughs> it comes back and hits you in the face. Bam! Oh, love that. Uh, I really love Savage Worlds. I got some flack for this one. I don't like games with cards. Look, Forbidden Lands has cards. I don't use them. The advanced combat techniques, I don't use them. I don't like cards in my role-playing games. Uh, to be clear, if you do, continue to play with cards and enjoy your games. For me, I like dice and only dice. I don't like spinners. I don't like cards. <laughs> All right, let's get back to... Hey, Ghost of Tantalorn, how you doing today? Uh, so metamorphous zombie. Wait, you can turn into a zombie? Am I understanding that right? I... Get rid of the pointed ears in this character. I'm loving this character. Uh, turns oh turns others to oh. Okay, so let's say duration negative four. So that's gonna be a limiter. So that means it's gonna last a while. I don't remember what all the numbers are off the top of my head. Targets minus three, so if I remember correctly, that was like a range of like, uh, is that, was that the 10 meter range? Activation, so it, it requires to be activated, uses a consumable, and it is detectable. You can't hide the fact that you're summoning zombies or, or creating zombies. <laughs> you're going to be noticed. So that makes sense. Okay, it turns others into zombies. And by the way, for anybody who just uh, joined us, we are going through Dramatis Personae, which are 71 different characters. No, we're not talking about all 71. Um, but it's part of the best some extras. So if you want to see what you can get from it, and even if you weren't to like use this character, so like me, I don't like to play elves, and I certainly can't stand. I mean, I also understand that there's a difference between dark elf and drow too. By the way, drow are dark elves, but not all dark elves are drow. Look at Dalimar from Dragonlance, right? Um, I would turn this into a human just because I would. But other than that. This gives me a lot of concept, like, because I don't fully understand this stuff. As a new player to the game, as somebody's literally never actually played the game, I don't understand this. But now looking at it, I've got a starting point. I can do this. I understand the points, uh, why it costs 50 points. I understand how the level, the limiters and enhancements work. I've got something to use to base what I might want to do in the future on. Or let's say we're not even playing a 180 point game. We're only playing a 100 point game. Sure, but I can still say, you know what? I don't need these 50 points. Okay, that'd be a dumb one to get rid of. But, okay, maybe I can't create zombies yet. Oh, wait, that's only six points. Maybe I can... You get the... Okay, we're going to get rid of the wealth. <laughs> but you get the idea. I can use it to, uh, to come up with ideas for my own, especially when some of these, I'm not fully understanding, like, how to put this together. And that was actually kind of... I don't want to call it a complaint. It's one of my complaints of all games of this type. It's my complaint about champions. It's my complaint about GURPS. It's my complaint about... And GURPS not so much because it doesn't get as heavily involved in this. And, and my complaint about Bessem is that there are these... Uh, we'll call them pools, for lack of a better term, that can do so many different things because they need to. And I'll make a character... And this happened to me a lot in Champions. I'll make a character and then like three other people just tear it up like oh my god I can't believe you did this you could do this with these points and do that do this that Bessem isn't that deep <laughs> but it frustrates people like me who aren't versed with those type of systems where now I can just look at this well I've got something and I can go with it so if you're not sure if you would use any or all these 71 characters you can still find reasons to have this uh and you got the character. Uh, let's look at uh, Nemesis, rival house member, red type house politics. Oh, great. Now we're playing Dune. <laughs> uh, sensory? Okay, this is a drow. Diminished vision and sunlight. That straight up is a drow. Well, it's okay. We, we can get rid of that. <laughs> a significant other? Oh, see, again, I like that. So that means a significant other is going to be something that affects the character in the game. You now have backstory for the people who don't like story in games that just want to like throw some points together. Well, you know what? You don't have to have a lot of story, but now you do have, you instantly have some story right here. There you go. And special requirement, life energy. Okay, that doesn't sound good at all. 
that doesn't sound uh okay so uh he clarified up to 10 targets for one week that okay that's what all those limiters limiters are for the uh zombies or enhancements sorry um or lim <laughs> get, get all this crap backwards he the dog where are you save me i like it i'm just gonna tell you like like again there are changes i would make but this is a perfect example of why somebody like me would want this book. All right, let's, uh, let's move on here. That was a good example. That really was. Um, let's do one more, and then we'll move on to the next book. Oh, here we go. Felicia Mihashi. Raise Panthera. Now, anybody who knows anything about me, let, let's, let's, let's backtrack just a, just a touch here. One of my favorite games to run is Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and Other Strangeness. One, I, I generally like the Palladium system. I know it's got faults, but I generally like it. And two, I like anthropomorphic animals. The game I was going to do, except for I got this stuff for Bessem, was actually called Shard. And it is literally all anthropomorphic animals. There are no humans in the game. Amazing, amazing art. Game system I kind of met about, but, uh, you know. So like I said, because it's anthropomorphic animals, I can't, I can't picture the heathen dog would want to have anything to do with it. Very indie game, very small publisher. It's probably sold like 10 books total. Maybe more than that. But uh, that's what I was going to talk about. Why do I say that? Because this is the type of character that would catch my fancy right away. Now we're back on Imago. Habitat Geostation 5. Um, not that I would necessarily... I will, first of all, I don't play female characters. I believe that personally, personal opinion, not saying you have to do this, I believe you should play your gender at the table because of immersion reasons. I just believe that. I don't let, at my table, I don't let guys play females, and I don't let uh, women play males. Just because it, it hampers immersion, in my opinion. Your table, your results may vary. Um, but, not big on furries. I, I, can, I can understand that. I don't get in the furry thing, I just, I don't know, I like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, and it's one of the games I've run the most, and I, and I like, it's more to me about the special powers. It's less about, oh, look, uh, I'm I'm a cat person, or I'm a you know I'm a lizard person, or whatever. It's more of like I like the idea of having the claws, and I like the idea of walking the tightrope. You know, if I was a cat person, or having my pack if I'm a dog, or what can I do with my prehensile snout as an elephant? You know, it's like again I'm talking a lot of TMNT there, but I'm I lean towards these types of things. One of my D and D worlds that I ran many many years ago. Uh, I replaced all the fantasy races with uh, a different equivalent that were all animal-based. Uh, I played a wolfen in Palladium. <laughs> I can't... Yeah, um, but I didn't add them. I replaced the races. And yes, um, you know, the cats and dogs... Actually, it wasn't cats and dogs, but we'll just go with it. Cats and dogs had their animosity towards each other, so it wasn't like they were all... It wasn't like a furry gang. <laughs> that, but anyway. Um, so... <laughs> It's hard to imagine a 300-pound man as a petite female cat girl. Hey, if you're playing an anime game, just say it. You never know. All right. Uh, let's, let's look at uh, Felicia Mihashi, though. Uh, so how many points is this one? 60 points. Wow, that's pretty high values. Like, uh, so a lot of uh, stat points there. Uh, so we got some decent health for a 60-point character. And actually, we've got... Fairly decent, you know, higher skill levels than I, I would think for a 60-point character. But they're all pretty generic. No enhancements or limiters. Um, if I remember correctly with the special movement, you get, was it one or apparently two for free that don't affect the point cost? Um, my favorite one was bouncing off walls. <laughs> dang, 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 dang. It make you know I, I'm not laughing because it's dumb. I'm laughing because honestly it makes sense, and I never thought of something like that. And I can just I'm visualizing it. I, I like the idea, kind of a little jumping from wall to wall to wall. Got that little ninja thing going on, right? Just because I like to play anthropomorphic character doesn't mean I'm a furry. Well, that is true. You know, fair enough. Necromancer group, don't worry if you jail race you. I, I did that to a character in Palladium Fantasy. I was playing, I think, an evil priest, not a necromancer. The dude freaked out on me because by being uh, brought back as an undead, it, it ruined all chance of ever being resurrected. We were too low for that anyway. The dude wanted to fight me. <laughs> he wanted to fight me in real life. Because I was like, eh. <laughs> I rested. I brought his character back as some sort of little zombie or skeleton or some crap. 
Uh, I, I'm not so much into it anymore, but I had about 15 or so years where I just absolutely loved playing necromancers and, and things like that. Not so much death knights or dark knights but i i liked finding new ways of playing a ne necromancer that wasn't just against type like oh i'm the good necromancer but i'd find i'd find ways of of making it interesting but i i kind of ran out of ideas other than just directly going against type i kind of started running out of ideas um so a lot of chat going on that i hope other people understand but uh let's get to uh and, and i'll scroll back and i'll read some of that when we're done Oh, what are we looking here? So jumping makes sense. Got kind of a cat person here. World police gear. So kind of already got an occupation. World police officer. Says it right there. Okay, so. So world police gear. So marked panther. Okay, so this race, this species, is a, is a marked species. So that means some places maybe not so welcome. Or at least easily identifiable. Like, at... Uh, Went that way. Red tape, world police reports. Yeah, go figure. Always with the reports, man. I work for the government and always with the reports. Uh, skeleton closet and wanted. Oh, a gang does make sense. A gang would want to go after, especially an effective one. So I like this character. Might want to raise that social skill group up a little bit, though, you know. You know do, do that good policing, like, hey, the only good necromancer is a dead necromancer. Ah, I see what you did there. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not putting any of the chat up on the screen. I just want to go through this. And I know it's probably weird that I'm always looking that direction, but uh, it's because I did it by display screen. I don't want to change it. I'm lazy. It's screwing up everything already today. And, of course, we have the background. So it will probably explain all of this here or make your own for your game okay i like this book I, I like it more so probably because of what i was saying before because i don't know how to make a character for that i do we went through it but i mean i don't know the nuances like i was reading the discami uh discord where people were putting character bills and talking about that on there i was like what okay over my head <laughs> like you know, I never would have even thought about doing it this way, let alone like, oh, yeah, I guess it is best practice. Of course, when I look at it, I'm like, oh, yeah, it makes sense. And uh, slime. Well, here's your slime. That's a perfect one to stop on. But hey, by the way, um, there's a Discami. I don't have the link for it. I, I mean, I have it here. If, um, if Mark is still watching, if he wants to post the, the link, uh, he can do that. If, if it doesn't work for whatever reason because it's blocked, uh, I don't know. Send to me on Discord or something, and I can get the link up there because that uh, it is a good Discord to follow. It's one of the few. I have a total of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight, eight Discords I follow, and I was an early adopter of this, like in 2014. So uh, I, I just don't follow a lot of Discords because most of it's just crap. But I've got the Discami one on here. Uh, 71 characters in Dramatis Persona. Let's put that on the screen. I don't even know what it says, but we're going to put that on the screen. 71 characters in Dramatis Persona can either be used as they are, community for NPCs, or examples regarding how to build. That's, a, a, that's why I like the book. That, that last comment right there is exactly why I like the book. Or, hey, you can be a real lazy SOB and just grab it and go. <laughs> you really want to. Obviously not the intent, but, uh, uh, to say yeah in our group uh we had a paladin and a necromancer i can't imagine see i'm the type of i'm really old-fashioned about stuff like that no but, so what happened was is the necromancer decided to join the paladins god said this no 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 <laughs> it's it's the reason i say no isn't because it, it's not plausible it's just it's an overused trope it's like when i see the paladin anti-paladin or whatever they call them nowadays blackguards whatever in the same group i'm just like no Oh, does it make sense? Um, had to get creative on why they grouped. Okay, I came up. Necromancer needed protection until he got stronger, and the paladin was waiting for the necro to do something against his more. Ah, okay, see? It's quickly going to happen, though. I mean, to be fair, it's quickly going to happen. Um, something to arrest him. It turned out to be fun. Eventually, the necromancer put levels in the... What, just to spite the paladin more? <laughs> Oh, uh, that's, uh, okay. 
<laughs> Again, how people play at their own table is their own business. And just like I, I always go off, I always go off on Raven's Lair in this one because his dwarf wizard. Actually, he played the dwarf druid. Either way, I do it as a meme more than anything else. How he plays at his own table is his business. I don't like it, but there's always an explanation. Look, imagination is damn near infinite, right? Anybody can say, if you imagine it, it can become real. That's why I don't say, you know, uh, I, don't, I don't care what's possible, I care what's plausible. In my games, and believe me, they're not as boring as they sound. But, all right, let's go to, uh, to be forced to get away from the paladin. Yeah, okay, I can see that. All right, let's, uh, you know, we got the slime ball here. Look at all those defects. <laughs> 30 points of defects. Uh, but that's how you get a 30-point character. With decent stats, yeah. Oh, what's the size? Well, it's only size uh, negative one. I thought it would be smaller, but... Okay, let's, uh, let's move on to the next one. Let's look at Tokyo Sidekick 4th Edition. Now, what is this book? A collection of superhero characters. Ah, changing genres a little bit. Well, not really changing. We're specifying genre a little bit here. Let's zoom in on that. It's F11, that thing again. Throughout the streets of Tokyo, Japan, there are seemingly infinite number of villainous plots just waiting to unfold. All right, learn about the superhero teams that will... Uh, I'm sorry. Let's learn about the superhero teams that will stop them. We're talking about the villainous plots up here. And Bessem Tokyo Sidekick. Uh, for 20 superhero anime characters. All right. And again, let's give uh, credit where credit is due. I can't read that, but I'm sure my wife can. White necromancer type of specialized in healing. Eh. Yes, I played, I played a equivalent of a white necromancer that uh, actually did some healing. I felt a little dirty about that. I also played a necromancer that his whole, whose sole purpose was to understand the dark arts, necromancy, in order to eradicate it. Again, kind of an overused trope. I get it. <sighs> if somebody really, really, really wants the creepy spells, I suppose, I don't know. I just think that there's a reason that those spells are creepy and they should stay on the creepy side of things. I think it'd be more fun to try to stay away from that paladin or try to not let that paladin by actually being the creepy creepy but stay keeping that paladin up. like what i didn't do any what are you talking about did that happen must have been somebody else okay. all right um so we got the cool guy uh where were points here okay no points there let's talk about points that's not just says okay it just puts together oh 60 points uh, 15. So, 75, I'm guessing? If I, if I did my math correctly? Cure Wounds is Necromancer. Is Cure Wounds Necromantic in second, first and second edition AD&D? It might be. I don't know off the top of my head. Um, I will tell you, looking at this, So 50 total points. Okay. Likes prosperity cats? Vigilantism? Oh. <laughs> okay. This looks like something you'd find out of the old Batman. That's no, not six point carriers. Alternate form which gives him 15 when he changes. No, okay. So I guess what I'm trying to put together here is so, so let's use something simpler. Because I, I do see the ice form here. Is this a straight up 50 point character? It looks like it to me. <laughs> That's a for you. The reason I'm asking is, well, it may be self-explanatory. I don't want to represent it wrong, first of all. But secondly, I like the way the other book did and had it actually just said 50 points. Right up here. Big fat letters. Uh, these are 20 characters from the Tokyo Sidekick board game. A Japanese game has a license for US publication. Oh! You know what we should do? Uh, let's do it after this. If I don't do it after this, remind me to go to the Discami website and actually show some of the other games that are on there. Uh, I guess when I think superheroes, I'm definitely thinking more than 50 points. But a low-level superhero. That, that's, what, that's one of the reasons why I'm saying that. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm stuck in uh, <laughs> superhero mode. Okay, this one's 60 points like 
I mean, and, and looking at how these numbers are adding up, I mean, I'm pretty sure that is a 60 point character. So, because it fits that, that, uh, that price range. Hey, somebody that's not 5'8. Okay. Oh, wait. I didn't even realize that. So, hero, sidekick. Okay, so we got a hero, we've got a sidekick. Ah, there we go. Batman and Robin would probably be 25 points each. I don't know about that. That tool belt of his is probably, I mean, that, that item in and of itself is worth a ton of points. Um, so we got a hero, and now we have another sidekick. A little background on here. Most of these Tokyo sidekick characters are more Daredevil street level than Superman level. Fair enough, okay. So they, so the point levels make sense. And what's funny is I was telling Heathen Dog about this is, uh, I think the, the the point range that I would like... Now, again, I'd probably do something more fantasy, more Lotus War type stuff. Um, but uh, is around... Is less than 100 points. It was like at the 75 point levels where I felt comfortable. So, I had the tool belt and the 60 points, yeah. Uh, again, I don't want to look at every one of these. You know, there should be a reason for you to want to buy them. But uh, we got Alfred here. I mean, sorry, uh, James uh, Kiritani. It's fragile. What is that? That's supercar. That's uh, what's this guy? We're just gonna we're gonna base it on this guy. That's the electro car. <laughs> I like that. I'm gonna play some Car Wars now. I haven't played that since uh, since like 1990. There we go. Chicks dig the car, right? I, you know what I like about this art is it really does have a pewterish metallic look to it. It's James' item. No. No, I can't go with that. <laughs> Butler does not get a car like that. Nope. <laughs> uh, if you look here, so let's look... Uh, it's just for language. The, ba <laughs> the battle... Mo got me. You got me. I said Batmobile. <laughs> the Batmobile 60 point, 60 point car. Okay. Um, he's going to have to give that up to a real superhero. Just saying. <laughs> Let's go on. Nobody suspects the butler. <laughs> he was a gift. He was gifted by. And, you know, let's see. Uh, half British, half Japanese. Well, that makes sense. James Kiritani. Um, currently working in Japan for Genji uh, Hiraga. In his youth, he was GT racer. Oh, okay. He's particularly a good driver. I'm sure that's represented here by the points. He helps the heroes out. Excellent driving skills. And a vehicle loaded with secret weapons. As much as he respects his master, he isn't afraid to reprimand him for his rashness. So he's like Alfred with, with a tood. <laughs> there we go. I like this. Like, again, it's not against type, which is boring, but it's a twist on type, which I like. Twists? Good. What a twist. Good. Just going against the norm? Bad. So, to be fair, well, I'm giving him a shit. I actually like this. Oh. Great rabbit. Usagi Yojimbo. Um, Soju Sugita. Doctor. Uh, yeah, this is what I want. To be fair, my doctor out here is a mad scientist, so maybe in his spare time, he dresses up in a bunny costume and starts shooting people with arrows. It would not surprise me if somebody would say, yeah, Dr. Shadler does that. I'd be like, yeah, okay. So maybe. Uh, thank you, longbow and Japanese martial art weapon and hospital gear, of course. So where's the healing? Oh, occupation doctor. So he doesn't have any like magical healing that you can see here, but he's a doctor. A little bit more realistic. I like that. I like that. How many points? Eighty points. Good stuff. Power candlestick limiter can only be used in the library. Clue gleam. Oh, that that was that was that was a clue. Kid from Green Hornet. I'm sorry, I, I'm not reading a lot of chat, and I apologize. The ones that are sticking out to me are the Discami ones, simply because I'm looking for being corrected, because I'm an idiot. Hopefully I'm not frustrated. I'm like, God, this guy reviewed my game. He doesn't know crap about it. Sorry, man, I haven't played it. Uh, okay, let's, uh... What's that? Sorry, saw the hot chick, gotta stop. Kaguya girl. Norisa, known as uh, Tomo Mochizuki. Florist. Oh, she's from the moon, you know. 
Everybody's from the moon. That is a more reasonable height. Uh, you know. Just flo float it in from the moon. Why not? Uh, a lunar hero that comes in peace. Nobody from the moon ever comes in peace. You not watch 1940s and 50s sci-fi? <laughs> uh, what she got? Lightning reflexes. It's a lunar royal family. Super strength. Okay, that's good. And tough. All right. We're passing snarf snarf here. No snarf snarf. I mean, to be fair, though, <laughs> it's very, very anime, very Japanesey. My wife would be like, oh, that reminds me of da 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 as a kid. Oh, uh, yeah. I give her crap, too, by the way. Okay, what is with this? Okay, the tentacles teddy bear. Gotta look at the tentacle teddy bear. Real name is unknown. Smoothie bear. Ice cream store leaf. What? From a different planet? Okay. Four foot seas. That's actually bigger than I thought he'd be. Barely escaped his life. His home planet was invaded and destroyed by other aliens. Escaped by land on Earth under the assumption of the first being he saw as typical Earthling. He morphed into a bear mascot. Okay, it's kind of like, hey, to be fair, what did the Transformers do? They floated, they crashed on Earth. First thing they did, little, little robot drone thingy went out there, found a semi-truck, found some racing cars, found a gun, tape deck, good Transformers. It's not like the premise hasn't been used before. <laughs> and we're teaming our lost ability to trans- Oh. Poor guy. Helps hear us out. We're chasing the invaders that raised this planet. Okay. I like that. I, to, to be completely fair, again, I'm talking about, I'm not really trying, I'm not trying to mock it. If anybody thinks I'm trying to mock this, well then, you haven't watched this channel now, first of all, but secondly, I'm having fun with it. And I think that's what you're supposed to do with games, have fun. But uh, when you read the background, like, I'm like, oh God, what's with Tentacle Bear, right? Gotta go find out. It's not a bad background. And it's only done in three paragraphs. You don't need 85 paragraphs to do your background. Look at that. Right there. Likes milk and people watching. He's creepy. That's why he wears the mascot up. <laughs> oh, what did I miss here? Robots in disguise. Yeah. Tentacle teddy bear. I know what no one wants for Valentine's Day, right? He just reads leaflets uh, for the ice cream store he works for. Oh, that uh, sign spinning. There you go. He's on the. <laughs> what a new word working on this character. Uh, you know, to be fair, I, I didn't actually know that's what a leaf letter was either. So you get to learn things through anime, uh, anime role-playing games. Oni. Demon guy. Haikyuu. I'm not going to want to read this, am I? I'm not going to. Nope, not going to read it. We get it. It's Professor X. <laughs> I do like the art, though. I, I, the reason I like the art is because she's not sitting there all cutesy. She's sitting there like, really? You're wasting my time. I'm smarter than you. I gave me that vibe right off the bat. That's good art. Okay, we got uh, uh, Samurai Showdown guy here. What the hell is the name of uh, that video game? Yeah, Samurai Showdown. Did a lot of that in the 90s. Alpha Kid. Now, now we got the spandex dude. Snake Kiss. That's gross. I don't want that. And don't put that logo on your shirt, Cobra. <laughs> uh, van what? Vanilla Girl. I'm not sure that's a superpower. Is she forgettable? Uh, secret identity, focus, opponent. Nope, doesn't say anything about. It. See, you need the power. Forgettable. I don't remember. She was so vanilla. <laughs> uh, Sonic Shadow. I love these names. But uh, again, to be clear, <laughs> I make fun of comic books too, because you know, Heathen Dog doesn't understand how somebody can like games but not comics and anime. That's this guy. I shouldn't say I don't like. That's not the right word. I just it's not my thing. I'm I'm not. Fully interested. So I make fun of all types of uh, comic book stuff as well. So, okay, she's just a little bland. Yeah, but that's kind of the thing. I mean, if you think about it, she's a 10th grader. Same. She's not, she doesn't have a big Twitter following. All right, let's move on. Uh, oh, I got the hot girl. Oh, the glamour. Uh, Smear Louis. She's a perfumer. She, she's that chick that when you're like going into like Macy's or whatever, it squirts a perfume in your face and you want to punch her. 
Uh, an ice cream? Nail art. Okay. You, you know what I kind of like about this art right here, specifically? Is it doesn't look as anime as it does. It's almost like a hybrid between like an 80s cartoon and modern anime. I, I like that. And now we've got the items of power. Okay, let's, uh, let's do this. If you haven't uh, figured out yet, I enjoy this stuff. I don't know when I'll ever use it. Uh, so I'm going to be careful with this one because I don't want to spoil anything. So we're probably not going to go too far in this book. Let me just make sure this is the one I'm thinking. Yeah, okay. I, I definitely don't want to spoil anything. Go, go get it. Go, go play your own adventures. Uh, but we'll take a look at it real quickly. Uh, just pretty much the first few pages. That's it. Adventures 4th Edition. Introductory Adventures Scenario Volume 1. The myriad realms of imagination. There are an infinite numbers of dramatic stories waiting to unfold. Spoil the multiverse with awesome adventures. Okay. First story module. The characters summon across dimensions from their homeworld of Balibdos. Fantasy World Magenta the Games. Okay. So I'm gonna kind of just stop here. I really don't I, I want to give credit where credit's due. Um, I'm sure the introduction won't give too much away. I hope not. This uh, scenarios for four to six uh, players, 40 character uh, points, and 90 win on magenta. Okay. So uh I'm a little disheartened that this isn't in color. Not that it, ma it does not matter to me. I'm so used to seeing the purples and so forth. <laughs> that I'm like, oh, it's all. but uh, it's still high quality. So there we go. Give credit where credit is due. And I am not going to show any more of this. Uh, is there, I said that, okay. Um, is there like an index? See if there's an index at the end. Nope, just characters, and I don't want to give away those stats. So if you saw stats that quickly, you did. For four months uh, uh, at a maid cafe in San Francisco in 2008, job was fun. Dealing with the creepy neck beers was a nightmare. I get, yeah. Now, what we all came for. This has been going on for an hour. I thought the entire segment was going to be an hour. 146 pages. This is not a review. And this is not an in-depth, although we went, we went pretty in-depth with some of those characters, just because I wanted to show what, what, what it was showing there. This is going to be quick, fast, and in a hurry. I want to show what's in the book. If, uh, if Mark has anything to say, he'll throw it in the chat. Like, if I skip something that's really important, that's like, no, 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 show this part of the book because it's going to be the game changer, I will absolutely do it. But uh, other than that, I kind of want to go through it quickly, simply because uh, I, I don't want this to be a four-segment long. It's just supposed to be for today. This is a filler thing while Heathen Dog wasn't here. Rules, expansions, and character options. Now, if you remember me saying one of my kind of dings on, on the Bessem game was I really felt that a lot of the character uh, options and combat options that, were gonna, that are going to be here, or at least I think are going to be here, I really felt should be in the uh, player's handbook because they're things that I would want to use at a moment's notice, like right, right away in a game, like aim shots or whatever. But I could be wrong. So we'll take a look at that here. And maybe they'll have to have me adjust my review. But uh, essentially, this is like a companion book or uh, an extras book, for lack of a better term, for Bessem. You don't need to play the game, but can enhance your game. Like, a non-creepy neckbeard would be a castaway. Oh, there we go. Yeah, Saber Expert says, and now for the main event. There we go. Yes. Um, I'm not going to be overly quick, like as in, oh, there we go. Book's done. But I'm really not going to stop anywhere too specific, other than maybe some of the, uh, let's see what some of the combat features and so forth are. So, uh, we got broadening your game. Got uh, some more skills. Genius skills, ooh, skill specializations. Did not miss the extras book. And, of course, this is segment one, so it will go up on, uh, on YouTube as its own segment on Thursday. Now for something we hope you'll enjoy. I hope I hope you enjoy all of it. Jeez. Um, I was told that uh, when a certain person left our, uh, we we lost a pretty prominent member recently. We'll just say that I was going to lose half our views. Well, I'm glad to see that hasn't happened. I mean, we're a small channel. We don't get a lot anyway. But all right, um, I appreciate everybody that's here. And in fact, I have to do it. I have to do it. I have to do it before we go on. 
please subscribe. If you like what we're talking about here, well, what I'm talking about here, there's no we today, jerks. Abandon me. I have abandonment issues. But go ahead and give this uh, episode a thumbs up, like, and uh, you can find this. You can find this uh, in its own segment on Thursday. And share, 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 share. YouTube doesn't like me because of what we talk about in segment two. Expanded mechanics. This is probably where I'll take a little bit of time. Aim, waiting for an opening, total defense. This is one of those things that uh, I have not looked at. It. I could be completely wrong about how it is in this book, but like holding actions, something that annoys me in games like Dungeons and Dragons. And I don't mean that. I'm just talking general games as a whole. Holding actions always annoys me because on one hand, it makes realistic sense. And you don't want to tell somebody no. On the other hand, every damn round, you've got three people trying to hold actions for this and that and the next thing. And I don't want to get into the whole it slows the game down business because I'm one of those people that likes rolling initiative every round. Because I think that randomness is important. But I don't know. There's just, I've never, going back to when I was in my teens 30 years ago, I've just never really liked holding actions or waiting for an opening. But we'll see what the rules here. Maybe I'll like these rules. Never know. Why can't I hold all these actions, right? Um, we'll have a combat flowchart. Combat maneuvers. Reading hold. Oh, there we go. Oh, there we go. Page 35. Uh, there it goes 36, then back to 35 again. I don't know if we'll find out if that's a typo or if uh, it's just the way the chapter works. I don't know. Uh, let's see, optional rules, critical hits. That's something actually I'm interested in looking at. So we're going to want to look at uh, page uh, 57. I do want to look at... Uh... Now, this is something that I can totally see not being in the main rule book of, of a game. Although a lot of OSR people complain about this. Like, oh, that game doesn't have rules for mass combat. I don't normally want that stuff. I'm not saying it shouldn't be there. But it's not something I need in a main book. Other people do. I don't. All right, let's... uh. Gear mech oh, this a, okay, maybe this book will go slower than I thought. <laughs> because a lot of this I'm interested in already. Oh man. Stop making such good books. And we're back to the awesome art. Uh what's the dude's name? I think it's gonna be covered. I'll know it when I see it. Um she, I think it's Sheelan. Yep, yeah, there. <laughs> or Sheelan. Oh, her name. Oh. I'm misgendering people here because I said his name. Oh, uh, but uh, that's awesome. So I'll just have to remember. She's a she. A uh, core framework. Broadening your game. <laughs> When's the, the Well, the book is kind of released. I think he said that it was going through a uh, 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 print process. Or no, it's been printed. It's going through the... Um, just got to be shipped. So I can't send you mine. Watermarked, and I wouldn't do it anyway because I don't believe in stealing. Just caveat to that rule, but uh, this book doesn't fall in that caveat. <laughs> it's a zone in. Uh, okay, so we've got uh, attributes. Again, I don't want to read all of this. So absorption. So these are just more powers. You remember attributes in this game are kind of like your powers, your traits, your abilities, and so forth. We got some absorption. Uh. So additional mod what is this? These entries are either new introductions, best of them, optional game rules, or expansions that add variety of choices to existing attributes. So synergistic damage can be both absorbed by this attribute and converted by the character's conversion attribute. Jeez, creepers. Oh my god, excuse me. I hope you all didn't have to hear that. Uh, kept the character's health and energy point until it can never exceed its normal maximum. Well, that would make sense. Just keep sucking in more life. I absorb all the life. I have a billion hit points. I mean, I could see that as a story hook, but not for a player character. PDF will be on drive through RP. Here, let's put this on the screen. PDF will be on drive in mid-January. Print books in retail stores mid-February. Available for direct purpose. Jeepers creepers. I can't read. I can't talk. Direct purchase from our website earlier, though. And we will take a look. Like I said, if I forget, make sure I don't forget. Um, and uh, we'll show off the Discami website. I'll have to go to it. I didn't put it up this time. I don't know why. I normally do it. This, again, this week has just been crazy weird. Uh, so we got some armor. 
so somebody got mad at me because like so you so you complained about the book being written in the they them gender neutral format which it's not the the, the gender neutral thing that bothers me it's the they them thing that does and it just it always will but you didn't care about the misspellings i'm like these are misspellings it's from canada <laughs> like like that's how it's spelled no it didn't bother me just like a lot of times we put z's and things that uh, you know british english uses s's why wouldn't no uh it's like i think you're a hypocrite on that one it won't be the first time somebody called me that um so anyway we got to we got a bunch of new uh yeah attributes oh. hey somebody's playing um not Project Mars. What what the hell is that Paradox Interactive game? Surviving Mars? Uh. <laughs> I still find focus spelling weird. Eh. Hey, look. I always say that there's one thing the Brits absolutely have right, and I know I know this is Canadian, but I'm saying the Brits specifically, is aluminium. I hate the word aluminum. It sounds uh Skills versus groups. All right. So, um, physical versus social defects. We talked about defects. Uh, you, you can, uh, yeah, you can, you can look at that in our past videos. I, I really don't want to stop on every little thing that, holy crap. Now, the area assignments of guys, I think it only did go like one through five, one through six in the main book. Wow. So in case you want to affect us an entire solar system with your fireball spell, there you go. Uh, who knows? Uh, anyone knows up with the A to Z thing? Well, they say Z for Z. I mean, <laughs> I, I guess because I speak, well, I'm not fluent. I'm not even conversational in two of them. I can read it enough to be dangerous, but I speak French, Russian, and Japanese. Okay, my wife would say no to the Japanese thing. Uh, some of that stuff, like the Z thing, doesn't bother me. And so, in fact, some of it makes sense. It's, it's a way the CIA uses to determine where you're from, though. If you think you're going to uh, you know, fool somebody, better learn how to actually speak like them. Some good art. Okay, um, I want to go to page, I think it's 35. Obscenity rolls, hold on, stop. This is for Heathen Dog. For gritty horror, horror games and paranormal occult adventures, remember Heathen Dog, we're going to also, later on, we're going to do Heathen Dog's video for his uh, Call of Cthulhu. Remember, if you're a paid backer, you get first shot. If you're a follower, subscriber, a non, non-paid one, just follower, subscriber, you get second shot. Heathen Dog's running a Call of Cthulhu game because of our 2,000 subscriber uh, giveaway stuff. And uh, I'll have a video on that later. So if you're interested in that, sign up on our Discord. Make sure you're a follower or subscriber. If you want to guarantee your place, basically, first come, first serve, and be a paid backer. Your character is confronted by a traumatic experience. By the way, you know, everybody uses Call of Cthulhu, but, you know, the Palladium system has horror factor. I think it was a little too intense in Palladium. <laughs> like, I always tone it down a little bit. Uh, but, uh, so this wouldn't be the first game to do it, but I, I like this stuff. And I even use this sometimes in fantasy. If you're, if we're playing an off the farm type fantasy game, and it's the first time you've seen something really crazy in a low magic, we're not talking like a high fantasy world, we're not talking like more of a low fantasy world. Oh, I'll absolutely use some sort of horror or sanity role. So it's great. Uh, so uh, whenever a character is confronted by a traumatic experience or otherwise perceives an odd event that challenges their understanding of reality. I just said it. Well, wow. uh, the GM may ask for a sanity roll. Similar to a stat roll, the success of a sanity roll is determined by rolling two dice and then adding the average rounded down of the character's mind and soul stats. Well, that makes sense. The result is a total roll, which is compared to the target number. Okay. Makes sense. Mike? Uh, feeding octopus to the kid. What? Oh, I see. Okay, because of what Noro said. <laughs> Palladium also to be on the supernatural and night being RPGs. Yes, that is true. Beyond the Super, I don't think they have the license for Beyond the Supernatural anymore. I could be wrong. I know they lost a couple of their like the Robotech license, and I'm mad because I didn't get any of the Robotech games before they lost the license. <sighs> All right, uh, but you can look at the sanity rolls here. So if you want to run a horror game with Bessem, boom, there it is. Good stuff. Yeah, 
you know, it's funny. I wish this chapter two skills thing wasn't there. I just kind of wanted to see this top to bottom. I wish I could afford a good artist for my stuff. All right, skills. So skill ranks, casual skill exposure, skill entries, skill specialization. I don't know why when I saw this, I was reminded of an anime I absolutely can't stand. There's probably no reason for it other than the fact that it's very blue hue. But uh, I remember Sherris many, many years ago, 20 or so years ago, made me watch this uh, anime called Perfect Blue. And I almost broke his DVD in half. Uh, acrobatics. Three points per level. So more skill groups. Okay, animal training. Any single animal, such as bears, dogs. So right here, we got the circus. Acrobat, animal training. Oh, my cat's leaving. My wife must be feeding him. Uh, we got the circus going on here. Biological sciences. This is good. Uh, this is good, not only because they're there, but also like this discussion here. For genius skills. A skill ranked beyond the usual rank six limit is considered a genius skill that represents an unusual mastery in the field. Okay. Got it. Got it. You can read more. I saw, I saw the, the, the genius in there, the rank eight. I like more skill groups. I, I like, I don't know how to say this. I like what this uh, artwork is trying to show. I don't like the art style, but it reminds me like, not this necessarily specifically, but impressionism. I hate impressionism. I, I, I God, had an entire quarter of French my senior year in high school where we had to deal with freaking impressionism. And I hated every minute of it. I like my art to be realistic, even if it's cartoony realistic, but it's, it's good. Don't get me wrong. It's good. It's just not the style I like. Looks like it was done with chalk. That's something uh, I tried to do when I was, uh, I used to be a graphic artist when I was in the Air Force. They gave me a, some sticks of chalk in this little metal container. <laughs> it came out looking like total mud. You'd have been better off gave, grabbing the five-year-olds that do little hopscotch stuff on the road <laughs> than, than what I was trying to do. Oh, God, it was bad. I got some, got a whole bunch more. Look at all these skills. Okay. Lots and lots of skills. At some point, Impressionism is just random color. You know, what's, what is cool about Impressionism is when you stand like a mile away, you're like, oh, I wonder what that is. Then you walk up to you and like, oh, I got no definition. Thanks, Dick. <laughs> you know, so. I want to be clear that I thought that was good art because I could feel like, uh, uh, to me, when I look at things like any sort of art, I look for an emotional response. So this is one of the things about music. A lot of people say, I listen to music for fun. Well, I've got Weird Al for that. Other than that, I want music to invoke some sort of and it doesn't have to be necessarily through the, the actual words of the lyrics, but just the way the song is put together. I want it to invoke some sort of emotion on me, which is why I'm really picky about singers. Why I love Camelot, spelled with a K, uh, the Roy Kahn era Camelot, because he could invoke that emotion when I'm listening to it, even if I didn't know all the lyrics to the word. And this does that. I just don't like the style. It's not for me. This is, a, you know, I, I feel like this is just a sell from a show. A little varying skill cost by genre. That's an interesting one. The point, of a, the point cost of a skill is based on its utility. Oh, yeah. Well, that was kind of mentioned already in the main book. Otherwise, highly detailed and technical skills such as sciences and medical engineering fields would always be the most costly regardless of their utility within the game. Uh, for example, typical action adventure setting, the action scientific and tech skills are fairly costly. Conversely, the humanistic and business skills are inexpensive. But if you're, see, now if you're playing a diplomatic style game, heavy role play, I could see that absolutely being flipped on its side. Okay, so you see, okay, says it right here. The reverse is true in a slice of life setting. Yeah, yep. Yeah, makes sense. I thought it said this in the main book, though, or at least I felt it said that if it didn't directly. But uh, probably just goes into more expounding upon. It, this, this is what an extras or a player's companion or whatever type book is supposed to have. So this is good stuff. Genre skill cost by my... Oh, wow. Okay, well, there you go. Obviously, you're welcome to do your own, but that's... Uh, 
Okay. <laughs> I'm doing a horror game. Excuse me. I got the hiccups. A classic horror. Hold on a second. Usually I hold my breath, but I'm going to see if I can cough my way out of that one. Um, so two, two, two. Where's the three? Computers. Because that would be important. Or kind of out of scope in a way. Especially when you talk investigative. Yeah, I can see that being important. Intimidation <laughs> to get information. Yeah, I could see that. Occult, of course. What is every Cthulhu game? Okay, yeah, no, I, I makes sense. Jeepers, creep, and more. Okay, stop with the genres, man. <laughs> That's actually good stuff. Like, holy Histor oh, wait, 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 hold on. Fantasy, fe oh, okay, I see how it's broken down. Modern day, fantasy and future. Yeah, stop highlighting. Historical, uh, okay, good stuff. Whoa. Bright colors on that one, wow. I like attack my eye hole. Oh my God, you yeah, but they're good charts. I, you know, I used to play a Hackmaster, Rollmaster way back, not Hackmaster, Chartmaster and Rollmaster way back in the day. Charts don't bother me. In fact, if it's going to help me, come on, I can't have computers in the age of discovery. What's up with that? <laughs> uh, when did Pascal live? What am I, uh, Claude Monet was great. Uh, I had to learn Monet and Renoir and that other dude that started with an R. Okay. Mechanics, enhancing your rules. Okay, here we go. I have to spend a little bit of time here. Cute dragon. Very colorful. Very vibrant. Yeah. Don't talk to uh, Ethan Dog about Dragon Pilot. If he's watching right now, he probably just downvoted this <laughs> the stream. Uh, goes in more detail. So tactical. Aim. Character who intends to make a ranged attack may deliberately take extra time to aim. The character aims a ranged weapon at a particular target for an entire round and does not move or defend during that period. The next ranged attack on that opponent, following around gains minor edge. Okay. Yeah. That that makes perfect sense. If you remember how the edges work, um, I'd like to bring up the chart again. I don't have it here. But there's minor and major uh, edges and uh, not deterrence. Oh my god. Bad ones. Because I can't do words right now. My god, that is gonna kill me. Me word good. Obstacles, yeah. <laughs> god damn. Oh. Some would say I'm a professional. I wouldn't say that. Oh, wait for an open. Okay, attackers at melee range may use tactical action to study. Oh, and wait for an opening instead of attacking. This works much like aim. Next melee attack. The following round gains a minor edge. Second consecutive. Huh. I, I get the rule. I just I always look for how things can be abused. Now, on one hand, dude's punching you for three rounds straight, basically. Yeah. If you've got like a one shot item or something like that, like a poison, okay. No, I can see this. That's. I charge my classmates a payment and sorry, gummy worms and Dr. Pepper for me to check them out. <laughs> we gave. <laughs> my wife uh, said, hey, bring these. To oh, you're not going to see it because green screen. Uh, my wife said, bring these to work. I'm like, Work is never going to trust jelly beans again because we did uh, not just the bean boozled, but the Harry Potter ones. By the way, there's an old video. It's somewhere on our channel somewhere of me playing Monopoly with Heathen Dog. And every time I owed him rent or whatever, I had to pop one of those stupid uh, Harry Potter nasty jelly beans. And by the end of it, my face is pale. I was drinking vodka to get rid of the taste. And you can see I just quit. I literally just quit. I was like, I'm not eating any more of these things. I'm out. I quit. The game's out here. Have all the rent in the world. I didn't care. Like, I wasn't going to do it anymore. Anyway, <clears throat> the, uh, yeah, so it's got to be an important. Let's get back to this. You're right. Hold on. Yeah, it does. And I can see that. Like, like you've got one. You've powered up your fist of doom. Ah! 
But as soon as you swing, the power is used. Or like a lot of first or second edition AD and D type touch spells, right? Doesn't matter if you actually touch or not. You tried it, it vanishes. I, yeah, I, I could see it. And in. And, and, I don't really see a way for this to be manipulated. I'm sure there is. Everything can be manipulated, but just off the top. Of so, no, I, this one, not so concerned about it not being in the main book, but I, re, I still wish this one was. It's, it's not like, oh my God, the game sucks or anything like that. Not by any stretch of imagination. I just, this is just so prevalent in, in many games. But, total defense. A character who takes this defensive attack. This reminds me of uh, Defensive Stance in Earth Dawn already. Still move normally, may not take other actions, regardless how many enemy drones, it's characters dodging and weaving. Okay, character receives a major edge on all defense rolls. Okay. Major, I mean, it jumps right to major. So you can move, but you can't attack. Okay, yeah. That's, that's good stuff. Defense is one that I feel works for any game. Yeah. Uh, how did it work in Earth Dawn? In Earth Dawn, it, uh... Oh, crap. I mentioned Earth Dawn. Got a drink. Um. It was, uh, uh... Crap, I forget how... My brain. I hope this isn't senility or Alzheimer's. I'd be bad. I'm too young for that stuff. Defensive stance. It was a plus three to physical defense. Oh my god! Whatever. Let's just let's just move on. Ready? Holding actions. All right. This one we're going to take a look at too. I need to drink a little more faster. Coughing more. All right. If you want to complain about a spelling, you can complain about maneuver there. It's spelled right. I'm just saying. But you know, <laughs> the ready maneuver lets an attacker take an action later in the round. After the character's initiative is over. But before the start of the next one. Okay. The player specifies action. So I'm kind of reading to myself here just because I, I want to see, digest it. Specifies the action the character will take and the conditions under which the character will take it. Yes. Okay. Time for the character to then take ready to action in response to that condition. Like it so far. I want to see where this ends up. What I like about it is I think I like where this is leading. They then take the ready to action in response to that condition. There's ready to action occurs just before the action triggers it. Okay, yep, I'm good with this. The triggered action is part of the opponent's activities. Oh, if, here we go. Character interrupts the opponent's action because it takes place beforehand. Yes. Still capable of doing so, the opponent continues to do it. Okay. If the character comes to the action and has not yet performed the ready to action, the ready to action is locked. Okay, yes, I like this. I like this. So basically, it isn't just holding action. You're holding action for a certain event. Well, it didn't happen. I still need to do something. No, you were waiting for that event to happen. I like this. Oh, takes ready to action in the next round. Count rises to a new point. Do not get additional regular action that round. Okay. Character comes to the next action, has not yet performed the ready to action. The ready to action is lost. Yep. The character takes the ready action in the next round for the. I'm not. I'm not. I don't know why. I'm not grasping that. Character takes the ready action. Okay. Okay. So if it leads in the next round, but still takes the action before the normal initial. Okay. Okay. Characters. Are, so that becomes a permanent. Do not gain... Okay, so it changes the initiative and you do not gain an extra action. Okay, that, that's what I wasn't getting. Makes, makes sense now. Got it, got it, got it. Okay. Um, I'll attack the mage. I'm going to cast a spell. Yes. Yep. Yep, I want to disrupt the spell. Yep, I like that. I don't know why this wasn't, this wasn't registering in my noodle, but uh, it does now. Yes. I'll shoot the first enemy that walks through the door. Yeah, but you have to wait for the door to be open. You can hear him picking the lock on the other side. Yep, I... Got it. Oh, wow. Charts. More charts. Love it. Start combat. Is it ready action or is it general action? It describes character's action to the gym. End of action. Okay. Ready action. Character acts on a lower initiative in response to a specific action. 
So you only get that initiative boost. Specific action. There you go. Follow the chart. Check for shock. Boom. Okay, good stuff. Charts! I know. I like this. This simplifies it. You know, as some, again, somebody who used to be a graphic artist in the Air Force and had to make a billion PowerPoint. I, I can read this in an instant. <laughs> so I like it. And what I like about this is, again, I keep talking about the, the, the complaints. And remember, I rated the game fairly high. To me, an average game is average. That's rated a 10. This game got rated a 14. And I work on a bell curve, so it's almost impossible to get to that 20. Um, one of the things I said, though, is I wish there would have been more, uh, more of the, uh, what do you call it, the examples. Like the, the gameplay examples. Instead of the long, drawn-out ones, you know, kind of like with the old uh, Battletech, uh, which book was it? Um, one of my favorite Battletech, uh, wasn't the hardcover one, it was, it was like the, it's the one with the Mad Cat on the front of it. Anyway. It broke down some of the actions into, instead of a full round, just what is happening at that place. And this, this chart takes the place of that. So I'm okay with it not having it, because I can look at this and say, okay, pop, 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 I understand it now. Because if you remember, just a moment ago, I'm reading this, and I'm like, hold on, hold on. In the middle of a game, I get frustrated if I have to go, hold on, hold on, hold on. This I get. So, uh, no, I, I, I like this. I, I use 3.5e delay for characters that are busy looking back in the middle of the turn. Hmm. Uh, so I, again, I'm not a big fan of Watsy D and D, so I I don't play 3.5 or any of that mess. But uh, I have. Don't get me wrong. But yeah, sometimes you just got to keep the game moving. You know, I don't know if I want to do this or that. Great, you don't know. Moving on to the next play, <laughs> but I didn't get my action. You're right. You were standing there going, uh, okay. Initial consequences of readying. Oh, the holding character's initiative result changes after ready action. Oh. Since each character initiative is determined only once at the beginning of combat. The rest of the encounter initiative result is uh, is count on it. for the rest of the encounter, the initiative result is the count on which the character took the ready to action. Okay. I can see that. Act immediately ahead of the opponent should action have triggered the character. Okay. I've seen it both ways. I've seen it where I think this is simpler. Just like, okay, you're on the new initiative. Let's move on. I've seen it where you go on the new initiative, but you, then you fall back to the other one. I've seen people re-roll it. Like I said, I'm more of a fan of games that roll initiative every round or every third round or something like that that, that uh, you know, change it up. Most games don't do that. I understand why they don't anymore. I understand why this game doesn't. So, makes sense. Reading exam. Oh, we got an example. Assume combat begins with three participants. A warrior. Thief companion and a mage. Fantasy, my favorite. After rolling initiative results are Thief 18, Mage 12, Warrior 10. Thief acts first on 18. All right. But decides to hold his action until... Wait, what? I'm confused. <laughs> uh. All right. Until, uh, until they see what the mage will do. Consequently, the initiative 18... Uh, initiative 18, nothing happens, then GM moves down the initiative order. So wait, see what that, I, to me, that's a little too vague. I, 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 I get the example, and hey, and if it works for your table, I would say you need something more specific than that. Gotta be more like, I'm holding my action. Unless I see, you know, the mage's hands go fliggity flabbity flu. Something like that. But let's read on. Maybe I'm not understanding the full context yet. Consequentially, initiative 18, nothing happens. The GM moves down in the initiative order. Initiative 12, it's time for the mage to act. As, and as expected, mage waves hands towards the warrior and speak in arcade language. Sorry, I'm looking at something else real quick. Uh, whatever. Um... Because the thief readied the action earlier, just before the mage says, okay, so I, I think what's, what's kind of got me thrown off, that all makes sense, I agree with this, is I, I would need this just to be a little more specified. But other than that, okay, makes sense. I think it should be written that way in here as well to say, you know, until the, the thief, you know, says, if, if I see that little that joker starting to cast a spell or pulling out a wand, Something, but okay. 
It works the way I thought it did. In round two and later combats till the battle's over, the thief and mage now both act on initiative 12. As was explained. Makes perfect sense. Attack with two weapons. Got some dice show. Called shots. I'm not going to read every one of these. Remember, <laughs> the segment's been going on about an hour and a half now, so... Uh, Kind of keep this on the page for people who want to read it. All right, and some more uh, beautiful artwork. Done in 2011. Uh, multiple attacks with one attack. Touching a target. Striking to wound. I I'm reading this stuff off, but I'm not going into this just so you guys can see what's there. Grappling. Grappling rules for every role-playing game ever always suck. There you go. End of story. There isn't a single role-playing game that handles it correctly because it can't. <laughs> like, like, to be fair, because it can't. Um, there's always some weird nuance. This is when people get overly descriptive. Like, no, no, no. If he does this, I would actually do that. And like, no, shut up. You just, just freaking roll. Um, so, uh, yeah, good luck. But I do like that there was um, the length of this, though. Grappling maneuvers, lock throw, and this is where uh, Forbidden Lands does about as good a job as anybody can do. This character grabs opponent, contempt, grappling, uh, a, a special maneuver. So, if you grab, you can do a special maneuver as the next attack. So you can lock, you can throw, you can pin. So it does get into a ground and pound, some wrestling here and so forth. This part I don't probably won't have a problem with. This up here, and it's not this game, I, I want to be very clear, it's not this game. This whole section here, just generally on grappling, it never pleases everybody. That's why I like the simpler route. Simpler way of going about fighting. Ah, fighting does not require the use of hands. It's effective tactic. <laughs> Alright. Expanded combat modifiers. Movement attack penalties. Now we're getting into some tactical stuff. Defending with a shield. Oh, sorry. Expanded defense rules. Add options for defense. Don't have to use them. Okay. Didn't we want to look at like mecha or something like that? Mechanics. I forget what page that was on. Attribute versus attribute. Opposing attribute types. Whoa, 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 whoa. Attributes are several power levels of plus geometry type context. Aliens level four flight may be powered by super tech. The Protector's level 5 super strength may be fueled by arcane energy. Assault table 4. Holy crap. Okay. Definitely not something that belongs in the main book. Definitely something that's good for the extras book. Damn, Mecha definitely wants to say, yeah, me too. Don't worry, we won't miss that. As a huge Battletech fan, <laughs> I, I, you know, it's funny because I don't watch Gundam. It's more so because I'm intimidated by it. I'm told there's so many of them and so forth, but... Uh, this is the Pokemon, this is the Pokemon table, okay. <laughs> I, it's funny, the sad thing is I kind of get where you're coming from with that. I shouldn't, I wish I didn't. But, uh, I, I like it though, because yeah, somebody like me, I could, not that I would necessarily, but I could use something like this in even a fantasy setting. I could make magic, just in and of itself, how magic works, be derived in, in this format. So, yeah. I, ice is strong against blood. For some reason, <laughs> I read it as ice cream. Fire is strong against ice, but dominated by water. Yeah, that, ma that makes sense. I don't know why I read this as ice cream. What does this ice cream have to do with blood? Oh, ice. Again, reading comprehension. Just don't, don't have it today. All right, we're starting, to, we're starting to lose viewers. I'm boring people. You gotta stop that. All right, um... I do like that, though. That, that is a great concept and chart. Two minors equals a major. Two rights equal a wrong. Just remember that. I mean, what? Or two wrongs equal a right. <laughs> I don't know. Maxing out of uh, major is fine. So these are edges and obstacles. Okay. There's more stuff. Morale for NPCs. I like, by the way, if you didn't notice, this book is 146 pages in the PDF. It's not like there's only five things in here. You're getting a good value. Oh, is this the mass combat? Mass combat. So we're going to kind of look at this a little bit. Besides a role-playing game, not a miniatures game, nor a war game. 
or a board game. Although the system provides a uh, mechanistic framework, da -da -da, large scale battles between. I really think that, and maybe that's what this narrative decision is going to say. I always felt that large scale battles, even if the players were part of them, you only handle the players part of it. The rest of it is done narratively. So they can feel if there's a world around them. I don't like to act, or I don't even want to say act. I don't even like to role play as a game master the large scale. I don't know, I'm trying to parse my words together because I've done some large scale things, but yeah, it's it's almost always in a narrative format. I don't like rules for it. And it's one of the things, like I said earlier, that I've been noticing about some OSR stuff. It's like, I can't believe this game doesn't have a large scale combat. Just, just, just make it up. Like, I don't know. Definitely something that belongs in an extras book. Yeah. Multiple roles. Flow of combat time. Hours for, uh, this is kind of like good just game master information. Like, hey, when you're doing your, your, uh, um, when you're doing your war scenes, because let's, let's be honest, anime is full of a lot of, a lot of war. System provides one role resolution for mass combats of any size, any duration, even centuries. Yeah, I see that here. Years for legendary battles and... I, I just don't ever want, I mean... I'm talking for me personally, not not for any sort of like game design. Like for game design, this is good. Uh, it's just for me. I don't want. I either want the large battle decided by the players, and you know, in a step by step approach. Like the battle's going on around them, and as the players succeed, the battle succeeds with them. As the players fail, the battle starts to fail with them. You know, that kind of thing. Um, or I want it to happen in in a narrative format. Like I I don't like. Oh, the entire world was lost. I know I'm being hyperbolic, but like, so I, I just, I don't think I would ever use this. Like, I just, but I understand why I, no, I don't, under, I don't understand why people want it. I do understand that people want it. How about that? So I'm sure somebody can type in a chat why I'm wrong. It happens a lot. Social combat. Many RPG social interactions resolve either through role playing to this day. I think there's a couple of videos out there on that. I tell people that they use charisma wrong. And everybody, every old school person gets mad at me. When you roll an attack roll, you roll the roll, and then you deter and then that determines how the attack was. When you do a strength check, you roll strength, and yes, you got it because you made the roll. Or you failed the roll and, and it crushes you. For charisma, it's always done backward to that. And I've never liked that. Roll your charisma roll. I got a, I got a nat 20. I'm the best ever. Great. Even, you, even though you might not be a good role player, give me, give me a little line here of something that you said to this person that, uh, uh, that, um, that made it happen. And you know what? Even the, the person's not a good role player or, or a, a, a comfortable role player. I don't want to say good. Um... That character still is, or at least in that instance was, with that high roll, right? So on the flip side, you could be the best order in the world, and you could stay there, and you could give a soliloquy that would have me wearing a, 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 a military uniform and going to war with you, but you rolled a one. You basically said, that guy dumb. I don't understand. And I've got is some, I think Heathen Dog's this way. I think Garthland's this way, if I remember correctly. And, and it's the way I've, I've usually seen it done. But I just find that it's the backward way to do it. So, uh, special, uh, social combat rules are a deal to see who one-ups the rival in a bar. Or, oh, yeah, yeah, okay. I like the theme. It can be used in conjunction with role-playing or as an alternative to it. Um, I know I've been mentioning it a lot today. Uh, I, I, like the, uh, I like the Forbidden Lands. The Year Zero engine social combat rules. I... I I think they're simplistic, but meaningful. And let's see what this one is. Social combat value, since... Um, I give a description of the approach I took, charisma roll, and the result I intend from... Okay, yeah. I mean, everybody's table is going to be different. I, I like characters to act out their stuff. Yeah, I know it makes people... Some of the OSR people may angry, but I see role-playing as acting without a script. It doesn't have to be as intense as acting. I'm definitely an old-school player where I don't like 
Oh, I roll investigation. What do I see? Or, you know, I roll perception. What do I find? I think I had that backward. Whatever. No. Did you, I don't believe in that. But, um, I, I believe in your tactics, not, not your skill rolls and so forth. But I also believe in role-playing, getting in character and acting like the character. So, um, society points. A character also has a social analog. What? The character also has a social analog to health points known as society points. Character's base society points is equal to the social combat value. Okay, let's go back up here. I started reading this and I stopped reading it. Rules for social combat require characters to have a few new derived values. Okay. Okay. So we're, we're adding some more values. Cool. Um, since it, uh, it's a talent that the character has for witty societal engagements dependent on both mental agility and force of will. Social combat value is average the character's mind and social sets. Makes sense. So it's derived from mind and soul. Yeah. You know, at first I'm like, really? Soul? But no, no, it does make sense because soul is kind of the, the je ne sais quoi of social battlefield. Uh, once social sparring begins, GM should consider the following categories. Okay, so, so this is very similar. It uses different features, but very similar to Forbidden Lands. It, well, soul is more than willpower. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's your willpower, it's your luck. It's, I, I see soul as the intangibles. I mean, because willpower doesn't have to empower magic. It's an easy, easy way to explain it, especially in a game like Earth Dawn, because that's how it is done. But it doesn't have to be. It's just, it's that, uh, you know, I kind of consider it as like the, the natural aspect, the karmic aspect, the uh, how in touch you are with the universe. So, um, I'm not going to read through all this, but I can tell just by looking at this and a little bit that I, that I read up there, uh, this is something that I, I generally like. What, what I thought was really good is, you know, general wealth or valuable assets. I mean, let's be honest. Especially if you're talking that ballroom, <laughs> you know, with the, with the, you got the, the retired admiral with his ribbons, I punched my uh, microphone there, sorry, you know, with his ribbons going up over there, and then of course you got the debutante out there, you know, dressed in the flashy and the expensive earrings that of course she couldn't afford, but she borrowed from somebody, you know, yeah, I mean, absolutely. Social damage, and it's treated like combat. Now that is one thing that Forbidden Lands doesn't do, but this is, uh, Treat like damage, so you're going to actually win the social contest. Okay. Uh, this would freak me out, though. Like, I like the system, but I am not good in these. I'm such a matter-of-fact type person. Like, even at work, I'm like a robot and so forth. Yeah, don't get me wrong. I, hey, I have, you know, my emotional, I have my opinions and so forth, and I can stand on a soapbox, but not in this environment. I do not have that political acumen. At some point, I'm just going to get tired of it. It's like lying, man. I'm not a good liar. Like, I, I can be a really good liar over the short term, but I can't over the long term because I just, it's not that I forget. It's just, it's tiring. It's just tiring. So I would suck donkey balls at this. I really would. All right, let's uh, get some more art and then uh, changing the base. What is this? Critical hits. Rather than using difference between the characters to, to, to remember which critical... I, want to, I just want to see... I don't care about the rules for the critical hits. You can just know by us going through the book that there are rules in here for critical hits. Look, we've gone through a third of the book. I've got to speed this up. But I do want to see... Here we go. Critical failure. Also fumbles. Character overextends. Rips clothing in a provocative location. Oh... <laughs> uh. I see London, I see France. I okay, never mind. <laughs> uh, let's see what number 12 is. Character trips and falls given an opponent attacking the character major edge. Ouch. Don't think of it as lying through this creative narrative. Yeah. Hey Raven Sir, how you doing today? Good to see you here. Hope you're feeling better, man. I know that uh, things have been uh, interesting for you. In that regard. Roll exceeds by 18, extreme success. Okay. Well, you guys can take a little bit of look at that more. I, I, I'm, I have my own chart that I made for 2nd edition AD&D. 
and it is a pretty extensive chart for criticals and fumbles and so forth. To be fair, most of the options on there, and people don't realize this, are just plus five damage. But intermixed in there are everything from, uh, you know, break your weapon to... Once I ever... If, yeah, if I ever get that uh, actually recodified into a format that's readable. Yes, this extras book does seem like a very useful book. Yes. You know, one of the things that I was t I talked to on the side is like, you know, you were really nice to to Mark, uh, you know, where you'd go off on other people. Well, you know what? When people are nice to us, I'm nice back to them. <laughs> like, yes, I'm hyperbolic. Yes, I can be a jerk. Yes, I'm sure there's some things I said that he doesn't agree with. It's his game. And I didn't give it a perfect score. It's That's human nature. But he's been cool to us. I'm not going to be a dick to him. Uh, <clears throat> but, uh, no, but I, I fully believe that... Uh, this is this is a meaningful a meaningful book to have, which to me is important. Like, well, you know what? I I buy it because it's good fluff. Uh, that's more of an insult than 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 a, than a, than a, than a uh, uh, my God, I can't word today. Uh, than a compliment. There we go. But uh, no, this is. I'm glad I have it. Let's put it this way. I'm glad I have it. Even if I never get a chance to run the game, I'm glad I have this book simply because I really do think that it is, uh, it's an important add-on to the game. It's not just something like, eh, whatever, it's fluff. It's like, but it also doesn't have a feel so far of like, God, I have to have it or I'm not playing the game. My, my one caveat is the aim. <laughs> like, that one just, that one, yeah, I can't let that drop, I'm sorry. The aim thing I wish would have been in the main book, but other than that. From what I've been paying attention to this book, has a lot going for it if we're going to run this. Yes, 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 yes. Here's how I would suggest this book. I'd suggest this book in the same way that I suggest the Earthdawn Companion. Learn how to play the base game first, then add the stuff in. That, that's, how, that's how I would do it. I'm sorry, I, I know I missed some of the chat. Let me go back to uh, 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 Umbri here. For example, Umbri used Innocent Charms, come across as harmless. Yeah. I could tell you that in most of my games, I would probably say, well, what do you say? Just because I like that aspect of it, but I don't hurt you or, or help you because of that. I think Heathen Dog, for good role-playing, will actually give you a bonus. Don't quote me on that. My problem with that is, what if somebody's shy or just not a great role-player? You know, there's an argument to be made for, well, then don't play a board, you know, but, you know, different strokes for different folks, so, you know. Tables on page 63 to 65 are very helpful. See, I like suggestions like that, so. But I know this isn't 63 to 65, but we're going to take a look at this real quickly. Wow. See, I know this because of Earth Dawn. I had no clue with, with the, the, I always say it wrong, Fibonacci. But this is how Earth Dawn does its stuff. When you like uh, do uh, level ups and so forth, or you get your legend points, things cost uh, 100, 200, 300, 500, 800, 300. So right here, I've already leaned towards this is how I'm going to do it. <laughs> I don't even know what this is for, but this is what I've leaned towards. If you can't tell, I have a huge affection for Earth Dawn. At least. Yeah, I have a huge effect. I'm not going to go into that. Some of the people behind games just... Man, I'd love your game if you weren't such an absolute heel. Okay, 63 to 65. Fence roll modifiers. Look at that. Time up. Time up. So one of the things I've been struggling with my game. My game is an XD6 system. Base 3D6. Roll low. And I don't want any modifiers. One of the tricks with my game, what, what separates us from other ones, is that I don't want any modifiers to rolls. I only want the addition or subtraction of dice. I think I found what it, <laughs> something I'm going to use as inspiration for that. Please don't sue me. <laughs> uh, I'm too shy to act things out in first person. And, and that's fair. And I would never pressure you into doing that at my table. Um, these combat tables summarize everything in Best and Fourth Edition and Best and Maxters. Attack my inconspicuous weapon. Well, so a nose. Okay. Health points have been reduced. Oh, I love this. This is a Shadowrun thing. This is actually something I'm incorporating in my... Damn it! Stop stealing my game! 
It's not half though. For me, I'm not doing half values. Uh, I use Shadowrun as my inspiration for that one uh, with, the, with the target numbers. <laughs> how the target numbers get higher um, based on how much damage you have. Great. I can already see the Discomia lawyers coming after me. <laughs> Good stuff. Um, okay. Has aimed. Got that minor edge. Has aimed for two. Major edge. That's, be, uh, that's because Earth is actually a really good game. Both rule setting makes sense. He's, for, yes, first and fourth. That's one of the things. Honestly, I, I got to say this. Uses all the polyhedral dice. That's one of the things. I don't like boring D20 system. Now you're going to say, but Bassam only uses D6s. Yeah, but you're rolling different numbers of D6s. And to be fair, I like D6s over D20, D20s. So, um, but yeah. Uh, I, I, yeah, I love the step system. I love it. It is absolutely my favorite system. Abs, bar none. Bar none. Uh, my uh, my current random form was a combo of taken from Dragon Magazine. To, yeah, I'm sure I stole some from somewhere for some of my charts and so forth. But I've had my charts since uh, the early '90s, and the, it has not been adjusted. One thing's been adjusted on my chart, my uh, fumble crit charts, and that's because I thought people were going to use them. I added in the two point of the AD and D two point five black book stuff of like uh, bleeding, injured, struck, whatever those little terms were. I did add those in in case those books are used. But uh, okay, uh, attacker is using one attack against multiple targets: two targets, three targets, four targets. So me personally, I would print this out, and these would get taped on. To additional cardboard pages that I would add to the Game Master screen. My Game Master screen would be like the, the, the natural one that you can buy, and then like little pieces of cardboard attached to it as I've expanded it out. This is the type of stuff that I... This belongs on the... Uh, on the Game Master screen. Alright, attack roll modifiers. Alright. I hate to do this, but... Uh, I, well, I love that this is in here, and this is something, uh, right off the bat, I can just see by looking at this here, I would use. I've got to fast forward to the mecha. I've really got to end this segment soon. People are going to stop watching. They already have. Um, so let's, let's go up to the mecha. And, and Mar Mark, if there's anything I'm missing between now and mecha that you're like, no, 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 please show this, I absolutely will do it. So uh, if there's something you're like, wow, you, you're missing like one of the most important things, I, I will show it. Um, gear mecha. So we're going to go to 111. Unless there's something beforehand. It's these deprivation. Yeah, we're going to go to 111. Actually, why don't I just type it in here? It's probably more like 113. Oh, I was right. By the way, everybody should give... Um, at Discami. First of all, he's watching on Twitch. So uh, go ahead and follow the uh, Twitch channel. I don't, I don't know if he streams on Twitch. I definitely know he's got some YouTube stuff out there. Follow his YouTube channel. Fo uh, follow the, uh, the Bessem YouTube channel. And, I, and I'll get all that. I, didn't, I don't know why I didn't prepare for all that. Uh, but absolutely go follow. He's got a um, bunch of quick start. Uh, like they're like five to ten minute long quick starts. Like how to play Bessem. It really helped me out before we did uh, our overview of the main books. Uh, over the last month or so. All right, so let's go looking for some mecha. Mecha, mecha, mecha. Let's stop a little bit. I'm at Discami on Facebook, Twitter. Boom. Twitch yet? Okay. I'm going to leave that on the screen for a moment for people to get that information, plus also for when it goes on Tuesday. Goes to YouTube forever. Until they ban me. Lots of items. This is the stuff that uh, I jones over. Especially in point-based games. I just like to see... I like to see the creativity of people. See, I like to think of class-based games as limited. Because you're playing within a class. And you're supposed to stay true to that theme. And I'm pretty hardcore about that. No, you're not going to play against type all the time. But in point-based games, you use your imagination. 
And I love to see the imagination, because I don't have it, the imagination that, that people come up with. Like all the magic items in like AD&D and 2nd edition AD&D. I, it's just, I could never come up with all that. I need a book. Don't miss the final entry on page 128. We will take a look at that. Here we go. Mecha and vehicles. Uh, 128. Okay. <clears throat> so mecha and vehicles. AI science station. Capacity is 500 people. Oh. Okay, so, so that's right, because that, I, I completely forgot that uh, buildings fall under vehicles. Yeah. Exosuit, so it's only 50 points. Well, 25. Remember, because these things can be taken away for an adventure or so. Galaxy class destroyer. I like the sound of that already. Aggressive spacefaring civilizations need a big stick when dealing with the enemies. <laughs> I love it. Uh, armor rating 100. Ouch. Remember, it might sound like, well, yeah, but I can make a character that could do that. Do you know how many points you'd have to spend on that character to do it? To break through that? That's a tough ship. Scrub carriage. I don't know, for some reason, I know it's... I just had a view of the Junkions in the Transformer movie. I don't know why. Uh, brr, sexy robot. Uh, it actually looks like something I've seen before. Not, not directly, but it, it's reminiscent of something. I can't think of what. Is it a video game? I don't know. But uh, we've got nuclear subs, Robot Guardian 5, I'm going to make a Dragon Mage character, okay. Guardian Mecha Alpha. Right, we've got to look at that, we have, we're going to have to stop for a moment to look at Guardian Mecha Alpha. Rating 20, capacity 2 people, but 20, a pretty decent, uh, decently capable character can hurt that. Just comes, ground speed, 500 kilometers an hour. Well, you know what, but I could run away. Good luck keeping up. Resilient to heat, okay. Tough. 16 points, so it's 8 levels. Okay. Shinkansen. <laughs> it's the bullet train. Ah, oh, that's funny. Hey, uh, and, and, and Noro, um, can, can you verify that he was accurate on this? <laughs> if she heard me, she's going to come in here and uh, be like, no, no, I was kidding, I was kidding. Does, Ma does Max remember the Junkions? Yeah, I do. Eric Idle was one of the voices of the Junkions. How can you not? He's the, the voice of Rekgar. I'm a Transformer nerd, too. Gen 1 Transformer nerd, too. Yeah, no, Noro, no, Noro, just go, go back to whatever you were do doing. I was... Terra Digger. Space Fury. I, lo I love the examples because it isn't just like one thing. Like, oh, let's make five boats and call it a day. Let's make some mecha and, and a tank. No, all these things are different. Get those brain juices flowing. I like it. Animal multi-suit. What is that? Oh, protective device. Okay. Space Fury equals Star Fury from Babylon 5. I've seen it, but I gotta be honest, Heathen Dog was more the Babylon 5 person. I watched it from beginning to end one time. I just remember Bruce Boxleitner was in it, and I used to hate him when I was younger because uh, growing up, I had a huge crush on, uh, what was the check? What's, the, what's her name? Um, I was gonna say Molly Ringwald. No, not her. Um, Melissa Gilbert. <laughs> he was like Mary Dirt. <laughs> uh... Things about me you wish you never knew. Lucky rabbit's foot. What was that noise? Tinfoil hat. Man. Yes, I love it. When folded into proper geometric form, tinfoil hat would protect the character from technological and mystical form. Uh, I'm just, okay, I have, where, I'm going to now name my character Alex Jones. <laughs> I love it. Oh, I love it. 
Max's trench coat. What? <laughs> Is that a thing? Say, like, you wanted his woman, didn't you? Bad, Max. Hey, man, I'm telling you, when I was a kid, I used to watch A Little House on the Prairie for her, not because it had anything to do with Minnesota or my grandma made me watch it because it's wholesome. Uh, <laughs> I used to watch it for Melissa Gilbert. When I was like a little uh, like 10 year old or whatever, watching that stuff in reruns. <laughs> so, the emotional and <laughs> belief in that. <laughs> I, I love it. That is awesome. <laughs> this book wins just for this alone. Oh my god. Again, the creativity though, because to be fair, you could put this in a game. Yeah, I mean, that, that's the thing. It's not just like, oh, let me make it. I'm going to be silly and stupid. You could put it in a game. <laughs> uh, let's see. How do you fire a crossbow with a sword? What? Oh, welded to your gauntlet. I, I don't know. Oh, we're back to the Dark Elf, the dragon. Oh, now it's about the dragon, though. The Wordling dragon. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Is that what he was saying? Is that what he said? It's like page 128. Was that what it was about on page 128? Because I honestly didn't even think we were there yet. <laughs> it got me. Let me go back. Oh yeah, the final entry, he did, okay. I didn't even think we were, I wasn't even paying attention. Oh, that's awesome, you got me. <laughs> Kudos to you, sir. Kudos to you. Ow, my cheeks hurt. Smiling too much. I'm supposed to be the grumpy one. Damn it, heathen dog, would you get back here? I mean, be grumpy. Oh, man. Come on, people, go buy this book. Go buy the book. Go play it. If you like RPGs, if you like point-based RPGs, I keep adding qualifiers on there. If you like anime and manga. All right. That was good stuff. Oh, 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 what's this? Uh, Diceless Besom. Well, we're not going to we're not going to talk about Amber today. Amber, the Diceless role playing game, but uh, a whole different way to play the game. That's an extra. OK. You can read about that. So, it's kind of reminiscent of Amber. I, I don't remember all the rules for Amber. I just remember there's like a, a, a bargaining system we had to do to make characters and so forth. So, this might have nothing to do with it. But I read this and I'm like, oh, that does kind of remind me of Amber. Okay. And examples of combat. And the index. Good stuff. I hope that wasn't too much of a quick overview. Like, you wish there was more. But, uh, I mean, this segment's two hours long. And we talked about Bessem Adventures. Oh, go back to the beginning of this one. Tokyo Sidekick. My God. Got these pages and I don't... Come on. Show the cover. Dramatis Personae. And, of course, the minis. The standees. Whatever you want to call them. And the minis. Now, I'm going to stop sharing the screen. We're going to get to the... We're going to get to Discami websites here in just a moment. Because I want to move this over here. I'm sick and tired of looking that way. I'm sure this whole... I'm going to get some downvotes on this uh, stream for that, but whatever. Share the screen again. And let's do it. You know what? I want to do it this way. Okay. And let's just do the Bessem for... It should already be saved there. Yes, it is. All right, so go to, uh, I'm going to put this in the chat. Go ahead and bookmark that. I mean, don't leave the stream, open it up in a new tab, but, you know, why is this loading so slowly? The hell? Uh-oh. Hopefully y'all can hear me. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully it's not buffering on the stream. Um, got fourth edition. Oh, hey, look, that's a Legion of Myth logo. Uh, we've got uh, Naked. Somebody has Naked. I think it was Shadzar. Somebody had Naked book. I, I figured if I was going to do it, I wanted all the rules. I'm a dice freak. I still don't own these yet. Maybe after I moved to Maryland. Maryland. Oh, I used to live in Maryland uh, to Alabama. 
Do, 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 do. The fourth edition line. You got more stuff coming. Got some dice. Oh, look at that. These are great examples of the art, too. Pick some good ones. Uh, let's go to... Now, go down primer. I want to look for... I don't care about errata. You can come here for errata. Oh, okay. Here's the Discord channel. You can just mash here. Goes right to the Discord. We were talking about that before. Look at that. All these little links here. Uh, do, 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 do. Oh, I didn't know. Oh, thank you very much. I absolutely appreciate that. Look at that video, video playlist by RPG Digest. Um, I want to look for, you know, maybe, do I have to do it, uh, Mark, do I have to do it from the Japanime uh, site? Japan M A. Oh, scroll up. Oh, store. Okay. By the way, don't get, don't get freaked out. It's CDN. It's Canadian dollars. Although the way our dollar value is going is probably a hundred. DC. No, 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 no. I, I used to live in Maryland. That, that's why I said that. Matter of fact, most of Legion of Myth, the way, uh, we know each other from uh, meeting each other in Maryland. I'm going to be moving to Babalama. Remember, you can also get this stuff on Drive Through RPG. It's PDF watermarks. Uh, I think he said in uh, January. But uh, why is it taking so long? This is not his website. This is not normal. There's something going on with my internet connection. I think right now because this stuff normally comes up quickly for me. But we can take a look at uh, Sailor Moon Truth or Bluff, Sailor Moon Crystal Dice Challenge. I, I honestly I don't play board games much, and I don't know anything about the genre. So I'm just going to kind of read through them. Oh. Uh, Tokyo sidekick pre so the, uh, yeah these are pre-orders I actually do want to still go to the uh, the, Japan, uh, the Japanime website I'm gonna keep that up there is it Japanime games I'm gonna try that to start and if that doesn't get me there Google will find it for me ah lots of things here this is actually where I first came across Bessem for those who don't know, the reason Bessem was even talked about was because those of you who watched our channel back when it was the old Legion Myth weekly live stream, when Garthon and Heathen Dog did it, uh, you know, in the evening on Saturdays, uh, I thought it would be a great game for Heathen Dog to review because he was the anime reviewer, and he also mixed in tabletop games every other week. If it wasn't for that, I never would have ordered it. So, uh, you know, good thing there, because... Because I just don't have that kind of interest in it. But now, I'm absolutely happy I ordered it. Cowboy Bebop. Is this the original one? I still have not seen the entirety of the original Cowboy Bebop. It's one of the few animes I liked. Let's take a look at that. What do we have in the Cowboy Bebop side? That is a game. Okay. Uh, Tokyo Sidekick. Let's actually click on that. Let's look at what we came here for. Tokyo Sidekick. Ages uh, 2 to 4 players, ages 12 and up, 40 to 60 minutes to play, and it is a cooperative game. Yeah, that, that's actually a nice looking map. Oh, I thought I saw chat go something bounced. Uh, maybe it was hard. my Discord went weird. Uh, rule books, draft rule books, what's in the box? Did you see that for a moment? Oh, look at that, a video! Tokyo Sidekick, but is it good? So you can come here. I'm going to put this in chat too. Just kind of, prom uh, I don't want to call it promoting. Um, I'm neither promoting nor demoting, but uh, giving you links to things that uh, may or may not be interesting for you. I'm guessing that this is going to be a good review. Publishers are going to put a bad review on their website. I'm just saying. <laughs> well, he looks tired. Anyway, lots of reviews, so check those out. And, if you remember, the characters for, um, Bessem were from this game. But if you're into anime, uh, one of the other reasons I actually want to show this, because if you're into anime, manga, Japanese culture, and so forth, I'm not saying that, you know, Japanese people would necessarily play these games. I'm sure they do. But, uh, if, if you're into this cu culture... I mean, look, you can play a game about eating ramen. <gasps> the Robotech board game? What?
And it's got special dice too? Oh, I'm in. I'm <laughs> gonna have to get that at some point. I'll never play it, but I'll have it. My wife will kill me. So, Andy, all right. Okay, okay, let's stop sharing here. I want to absolutely, and I, and I really want you guys to who are, who are watching as well, I want to send a sincere, hearty thank you to Mark McKinnon, to Skami, for, uh, for <laughs> coming by our channel, putting up with my shenanigans. Um, and I mean that because I know that what I do can be a turn off to people. But he's not only been a good sport about some of the negativity, which wasn't much, to be fair, it wasn't much. Um, but I, he, came, he gave clarifications. Could have called me a doofus a bunch of times, didn't do it. <laughs> so thank you very much, sir, for coming by here. And uh, I mean, I don't know when the next time we'll be showing off a best in product is, maybe when there's something new and so forth. But uh, I hope our playlist, this, this, uh, this uh, segment will be added to that playlist. But uh, I hope you appreciate what we did here.